Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'll introduce myself, first of all, Tony Ryan, Chief Exec of the Association. It's great to have you on board this afternoon for this. I just want to do a couple of minutes just really to tell you why we're doing this and how long we've been doing it and, and what our experience has been so far. We, um, we started this a couple of years ago, um, uh, at Teachers in Residence, and it was from a request of teachers who said that they hadn't been in, in industry or they hadn't been in industry for some time. And, and therefore, when a student came up to him and said, sir, miss, what's it like to be, to do this? Or what, what, would, what would happen in a design studio? They didn't really have an answer for that. So it was in response to those sort of questions that, that we reached out to business partners and said, look, would you help us with this? And it was originally, a three to five day placement um, within a studio. Um, and it's not, it, it is studios that have stepped forward, to be honest. We, we, we've had a couple of industry placements which have been in engineering as well, but it's been mostly design studios that have stepped forward with this so far. Um, it has been transformational for the teachers that did those placements, uh, bulletproof for one of the agencies that ran one in, in, in London. And the teacher that went in um, was from Birmingham and actually came went down and got an Airbnb for the week and stayed there and went into Bulletproof every day. And, and she went in a little bit uncertain as to whether the skills that she was teaching the kids in her school were actually transferable through to business. And she came away after that week thinking, yeah, actually what I'm teaching is spot on. I'm, I'm really doing the right things and I'm preparing kids well for the world that they're going into. She also came away with a whole load of ideas of things that she would then add to the curriculum. With COVID, we, 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 it was clear that we weren't going to get three to five days. That was never going to happen. Um, so we, we thought we'll try a virtual and we'll see if it works or not. Now, you're going to be, you're going to be on your backside for, for a couple of hours here. Um, but having done a podcast with Paul, you're not going to be bored. I know that for a fact. Um, so we, we, the idea really is to tell you how I'm, 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 I'm loathe to use the word studio, but I have to at the moment, Paul, forgive me for that. You'll explain that in a minute, no doubt. Um, but Paul's, Paul's business approaches this very, very differently. And uh, what you're going to get is, is a real feel for the way that it works. And hopefully there'll be lots of takeaways, um, which you'll be able to, bring back to school, take into school. And, and like one um, a teacher a short while ago did a tweet uh, the week after the vir last virtual one that we did, showed her workshop and she said, this is the first time that the kids come into a design studio, not a workshop. So I've nicked that. That's definitely our tagline now for, for teachers in residence. Um, Paul, I'm going to let you introduce your own, um, introduce yourself to a certain extent. All I will say is um, I did a podcast with Paul a short while ago. It was an absolute joy to do. Um, it's downloading really, really healthily. Um, and, and I think what you'll find over the next couple of hours is, is Paul's approach to what he does um, unleashes the potential of students through sport and creativity in a, in a way that you don't see very often through business. And I think I think what he's doing is amazing. Um, so I'm going to step back. I'll hand over to you, Paul, and I will just... I'm, I'm going to go through and hopefully learn as well, and then I'll wrap up at the end, if that's OK. Cool. Thanks, Tony. Well, yeah, firstly, um, great to have everybody here. It's I don't, is, is it sunny for everybody where they are? Because I'm in Hackney, and it's like... I was like, oh yeah, actually, there's a there's a there's a webinar. Can't stay in the park too long for lunch, but yeah, I appreciate I appreciate on like first proper sunny day of the year, you're going to spend some time with me. So, firstly, thank you. It's a it's a real privilege for that. First of all, um, and yeah, we're going to get to know each other. This is not going to just be me talking for two and a half hours because I will I will run out of um, I will run out of things to say and uh, voice box. Although I can't comment as because as teachers as educators. I mean, I should have probably put this in as a slide, but my I'm going to talk to everybody about kind of my 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 story. But having worked with educators, educators and teachers, like what you're all doing is like above a level of any kind of any involvement that we could ever do that I could ever do. So my experience has just been built on experience and working with amazing people like you. So you know, when everyone says like, "What is what's it like to work with teachers?" and I'm just like, they're just 
I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you have the energy to do it. So for me, it's a real privilege just to have an opportunity to, to meet. Um, I think we've got seven, seven, it looks like. Um, so seven, seven, seven more in the, in the journey and, and hopefully it's the start of more things to come. And, and yeah, I'm hoping one or multiple, I don't know how this exact will work, will be um, at some point coming into triple double and, and doing some work. So I'm really excited by that possibility um, as well. Um, as Debbie likes to point out, I, I do actually have quite a boring backdrop. There's some really cool backdrops. I can see Aaron, your, we've got actually similar bookcases, if that's a bookcase, to, to your sort of sports lockers. So, um, but I get the light. So apologies to my, my boring background. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me go and go ahead and share my screen. Got my, uh, got a variety of uh, waters. Diet Coke, so I'll get a cup of tea. There's a break. Most importantly, there's a break in this as well. We're not going to be doing two and a half hours on this. Um, so hopefully everybody can see my screen, which should say triple double teachers and residents. Perfect. And also kind of, to be honest, like I'm going to talk everybody through the agenda, but like if, you know, there's dedicated Q&A at the end, um, there's actually I've sort of set aside about 40 minutes worth, but I, I don't know if, a, if any Q&As ever last that long, but like, if you want to ask a question at any point, if you want to jump in, if we want to go off piece and have a, a conversation, just just shout out. Basically, do not worry about um, uh, me uh, uh, sort of interrupting the speaker. But yeah, basically, just 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 shout out if you want to. So, kind of the, the agenda the agenda is going to be as follows. So, um, sorry, Amy, I've, I've kind of tweaked it again, just just with some final preparations. But I think I was going to dedicate a section to kind of this notion of sort of like obstacles that we come up against as a team, whether that's clients, but the, the DNT Association first of all said, what's your obstacles with clients? And I said, they're the easy ones, it's the young people, they're the, they're the harder ones. So I'm gonna kind of use that as a theme throughout. And if I don't if I don't cover off a section about kind of obstacles with clients and um, young people and who we work with, like feel free to pick me up on that as a question. We're gonna firstly kind of just spend the first 10 minutes just getting to know each other. So I've got a really fun icebreaker. And I'll do what I usually do when I meet educators is just let, let you speak and I'll just kind of go silent. Um, I'm then going to introduce everybody to Triple Double. So I've got no concept about if anybody knows anything about me or Triple Double. Tony did a great plug for the podcast and I'm plugging away as well. But yeah, please, please do check that out. That gives you a kind of uh, a much detailed version of what I'm going to take everybody through today. Um, so that's going to be the sort of second part. Then we're going to do a break because after sort of triple double and uh, my journey, I think we're going to need it at that point. And then basically I'm going to take everybody through a case study process project um, on how we um, go about, I guess, bringing to life what I've, I've just said. So we're going to go really sort of deep into the detail of the, of the process. Um, sort of precursor, there is, there is um, spreadsheets and timeline screenshots, but it's part of, to, to sort of do all the madness that we do, you do need to get, get organized. And then, yeah, we'll finish off with basically the, the Q&A um, and you'll put me on the spot and hopefully I can answer any questions. But I'd rather just to sort of treat that as a bit of a conversation, to be honest, at the end. Um, I assume nobody knows each other as well, or maybe you do, but I think it's also just a great opportunity for everybody to, um, to meet everybody. So does that sound good? Is anyone expecting to be in like a kind of different webinar? We're all in the right one, I assume. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take silences, yes. I can only see like five people at the minute just because of the joys of the Zoom UI, so you have to bear with me. So officially welcome to the Triple Double afternoon, the sunny afternoon of Triple Double, I quite like that. So firstly, I'm gonna just go around the virtual room and I just want to, yeah, if everybody could just sort of introduce themselves um, and a single reason why you work in education, just one reason and I will cut you off if you do too, not being rude, but it's good, good, good to keep it really edited. It's a single reason why you're involved in education. So I, I can see Grant, so I'm gonna start with Grant and then Grant's gonna nominate someone else and then hopefully it should all work out. <laughs> Hello there, all right, okay. I can't see anybody else, that's the problem. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, uh, I'm Grant Lushman. I am head of department, I'm at Northwood School in North London. Um, I've been teaching 20 something years. Um, I've been in my current school for three years and uh, I teach product design, textiles and food. Um, and why did I come into teaching? Uh, do you want the honest answer? The honest answer. 
the holidays. Fair enough. That's awful, isn't it? No, not at all. <laughs> Thanks, Brent. Nice to meet you. Great to have you. Who, who, who would you like to nominate next? Uh, first person I've got, is it Julian? Hi, I'm Julian. I'm working at Marlborough College. I'm currently a graduate assistant at the school, like kickstarting my career into teaching. And so I wanted to go into education as I'd love to get more people interested in the things that I became interested in going into design. And Amazing. Thanks, Julian. Great to have you. Great to meet you. So my name's Naomi. I've been teaching for about three years now. Um, and I work in education because I enjoy working with young people and I wanted to have a positive impact. Amazing. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Would you like to pick somebody next? Yeah, sure. I'm just trying to see how I get everybody up. I can't actually see. Um, okay. I am going to nominate Jim. Naomi, um, my name is Jim Jenner. I work in education. I've been in it now for 25 years. Um, why do I work in education? I'm going to go with Grant's one, uh, holidays. Why did I start in education? Because uh, I really enjoyed teaching sailing and teaching design was very close to that and it was certainly not in a maths classroom. Amazing. Um, I'm going to nominate. Uh, I can't see anybody else except I'm going to go with Tony. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I've already told you what I do. Um, I... <laughs> Prior to that, um, I was uh, I've been in education for 33 years. I uh, was a head teacher for 12 nearly, um, and the reason I went in, if I'm really honest, I was a I was a car mechanic when I left school because I left school at 16, and I needed a degree. And I thought that that this was an easy way to get a degree, if I'm really honest. Um, and then the first time I stood in front of a class of kids, I realised I wasn't going back to the motor industry. Hi everyone, I'm Alex. Um, Alex is fine. Um, Alex, I work at the Richmond Upon Thames School, so it's a school just opposite the rugby ground, if anyone knows where that is. Um, this is my first year in teaching, so I did my PGCE last year, um, and I think the biggest thing for me was going into a career which is not only exciting, but every day is quite different, so I like that joy of um, diversity and um, having that varied day. Great, thank. I'm oh, sorry, Alex. I appreciate probably only you've been you're called Alexander when you're being told off. Oh so yeah, don't you're, worry. You've got to start there just in case. You just never know. Yeah, no, don't worry. Alex <laughs> is fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Alex, do you want to pick either Mick or Aaron, and then? Um, I can't see either of them, so yeah. if I go for Mick, I'll just. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mick. I am a head of technology in a school in Birmingham. Been teaching over a decade now. Uh, the reason I always give for sort of wanting to go into teaching was I, I did graphics as a GCSE a long time ago now and it was very uh it was, it was all kind of technical drawing and I loved it but um it wasn't really delivered in a very interesting way and it wasn't until I got to university that I, I kind of got more into the, like you were saying earlier about the design studio atmosphere and, and kind of how creative the subject could be so that was kind of my inspiration for wanting to go back and kind of teach that to to younger people try and try and show them what um DT was really about. So uh, I guess Aaron's the last person. Thanks, Mick. Great to have you here. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so my name's Aaron. I uh, teach at a school in Swindon. I teach DT and business. Um, so I've been here for years, but I'm also our strategic lead for IT as well. So um, a, a lot of what I do kind of I take into other subjects as well, particularly sort of other practical areas. Um, hence why I keep my CPD as varied as possible. Um, so I love doing stuff like this. Um, uh, and the reason I went into education is actually I used to be an outdoor instructor um, for working for myself and the groups would rotate round every single week. So you wouldn't actually see anyone on repeat. Um, so I went into education to actually see, carry that learning on over a period of time. So that was uh, my reason for it. Amazing. Thanks. Uh, great to have you here as well, Aaron. Would anybody have a, has the guesses to like, why I work within education. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer here, but I'm going to answer this question because I, I get I get to have the most time to talk about it. But does anybody want to have a, a guess? I'm just interested when you're when you're meeting people in uh, in inverted commas industry, why you think we do work within education? Has anyone got any guessing? <laughs> this question going down like a lead balloon. Nobody's nobody wants to take a guess. You'll you'll get a star. You'll get a star if you do. So 
Well, it, well, I, I, I imagine it's not for the money. <laughs> A teacher was inspired you when you were younger. I don't know. Interesting. Thanks, for that Grant. Anybody else? I was going to go with the uh, the the give back route to uh, from your own previous past or something along those lines. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, no, both of both of those are wrong. I I work in education. We work in education as a team because my education experience, one of a better word, completely sucked, and I wanted to figure out a different way of doing it. So anybody in the future didn't have to deal with what I have to deal with. So. We can stop we can stop the webinar now that's it that's the full story but yeah basically through my own experience um it was not great so yeah i'm not coming with the perfect picture of that you know i had a teacher that inspired me it's quite the opposite actually um and yeah i'm going to talk a, a lot around that and why that kind of is a real driver for the work we do so i think what it allows us to do what it allows me to do and you know we we, we um is to sort of you know is to connect industry, connect real world with education. And, you know, I know firsthand how, how powerful education is. It's just, I didn't get that. So therefore um, I, I kind of secretly as a bit older now, I want to get some of that back as well. So that's the reason why, why I'm into it. So um, maybe that wasn't a big enough mic drop, but there you go, that's the reason. So that is basically deserves a Simpsons round of applause. There's not too many gifts in this, but you know, you've got to start, you've got to start as you mean to go on, right? So yeah, I think, um when i ask this question to educators like just the uh, holidays hasn't been said before i'll be honest i quite like that actually i like the honesty so uh I like that grant um but yeah i think kind of just hearing um some of you've got very different backgrounds as well in terms of, i can't remember i think i can't remember if it was jim who said about the sailing sorry but it's just great to kind of hear how some of those um different points of view can kind of benefit young people into, into the classroom so yeah like i said it's just a real privilege for me for me to be here today so we're going to do a little icebreaker now um hopefully everyone's come with a post some post notes and a pen i hope or a piece of paper and a pen that's all you're going to need naomi's having a, a mild panic to be like where's the materials quickly go 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 Okay, has everyone else, everyone else got a pen and paper? Okay, so I'm the odd one out here, so this is good, so I don't have to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pair everybody up. So if you can't see each other, you do need to see each other for this. So uh, Amy and Grant, can you, can you pair up? So you need to uh, navigate to each other. Aaron and Tony, Mick and Debbie, the two Js, Julian and Jim, and then Alex and Naomi. That's just the order that I'm seeing. Okay, so staring into each other's eyes, you've got one minute to draw a self-portrait on a post-it note. Everybody understand that task? Everybody feeling a bit apprehensive about it? <laughs> cool, so I'm gonna time it. So time starts now. And we are finishing in five, four, three, two, one. Pen down. Can everybody hold up to the camera what they've just drawn? Get nice and close. <laughs> Brilliant. Everybody's got to do it. Amy, Alex, Naomi, if you, if you don't mind switching your camera back on. Oh, Amy, just hold that up for us again. Oh, you, I think you have to unblur. You're going to have to unblur temporarily. Oh, have we lost Naomi or is Naomi still there? <laughs> brilliant absolutely brilliant I, I i okay so amy i really like grant's perfectly square beard like that a lot uh i like i love the uh, mixed detail on the um the uh the top of of, of debbie <laughs> jim's is i mean you've got you've got there's like another cat there's a, there's a marvel character forming there love that love that okay cool so to be honest, that is, that's our ice, that's one of our icebreakers. To be honest, it's just a really, it kind of summarizes, I guess, the way we approach stuff. Um, get people out of their comfort zone, get them learning by doing, and basically getting them to think about something on a, on a real world, in this case, someone's face. So trust me, when you do that in person, it is with a group of young people, it's extremely funny what comes out. So the top, the top one you can see there is extremely funny what comes out of it, because obviously 
young people sitting looking each other's eyes whilst trying to draw themselves is extremely funny so that's just our little version of of the icebreaker so uh if it, has anyone done that before everyone's like writing down post-it no um icebreaker question mark oh i don't know if we've lost naomi or whether just the video has jumped off but i'm not sure i will continue. hey i'm still here oh, sorry here. I am still here. I'm trying to log on on my laptop because I was on my uh, iPad at the moment and I don't have like that many options in terms of like the video settings, the viewing. Uh, okay. I thought you were just bringing out the gouache paint to get Alex's uh, uh, pattern going. Oh no, get, I can't yeah. see everybody so I'm going to switch <laughs> to my um, laptop. Uh, so you're probably imagining what does Alex look like. But we're definitely going yeah. to we're come back to your portrait. We're going to see that. We will see that. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, cool. So that's the welcomes. That's the mini icebreaker. Right. So let's get into triple double. Let's spend the next 20 minutes. Uh, I will do my best to demystify who are triple double and uh, what is a triple double. So this is us in a nutshell. Um, we're a creative studio. We are based in Hackney, uh, Hackney Central to be precise, in between a cinema and a Weatherspoons and the town hall. So, you know, design is not always glamorous, right? Um, and our vision is all about unleashing how young people engage in sport and education. And we just happen to do it with design and with creativity. So we work with people like yourselves, educators, sports coaches, um, facilitators who might have a specialism in sort of teenage girl body confidence or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and we basically, in the kind of space of kind of education, youth and sport, from an industry perspective, the people that I'm aware that kind of dabble in this, dabble is the right word, we already work with them. There's not really another that I know of, <laughs> and trust me, I'm always looking to collaborate with them, who sits in this space. And so we are, I guess you, some people would say to us, and I think even Tony asked me this in the podcast, was sort of like, you know, it's, it's a very niche area, youth, sport and education. But actually, if you think about it, if you actually kind of, um, especially the last few years, right? If you look at kind of what those three areas are doing, there's always going to be young people. There's, you know, it's it's not like the kind of, uh, you know, the, the fashion the fashion easters of Liverpool who like a certain music for a certain age. There's always going to be young people. Sport education, I'd probably argue, the third space would be music. For for me personally, are probably the three areas of of everybody's lives that are kind of just I don't know. They're beyond kind of an interest. They're beyond, you know, they're seminal. They are, they are major things. And actually, like especially on the sports side, the difference between what's happening, kind of, you know, grassroots female rugby, right the way through to what's ha currently happening at Chelsea FC, there is a whole world of things that can be fixed uh, to help young people into those areas of their lives and do it with design. So whilst it's niche, in a sense, I feel like as a studio we are, we are just getting going. Um, so. We're not, we're not funded by, um, uh, we don't have any secret funders like Shell or oil companies or anything like that. We, this is what we, we do. I'd say kind of, we have the occasionally anomaly project that comes along and that's a pure kind of like big design challenge. Um, but this is what we do. And you know, that's something I've from, from day one, I've always wanted to, 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 to stick to essentially. So broadly how we do it, you're gonna see a lot more of how we do it sort of visually, but it's really about listening understanding, learning, and really just creating that space for young people to basically almost, I guess in this capacity, we kind of, we want to sort of learn from what they do in the classroom, but bring them into the real world. So I'm not here today trying to reinvent school or the classroom, because that's what everybody's doing here, right? So there'd be no point in doing that. So it's really about putting that um, sort of space, that momentum into the real world. And it's giving them, I don't know if commercial is the right word, but it is ultimately, you know, the work that we do is not just like, you know, here's some extra stuff just for the sake of it. We're going to put them right in at the deep end and we're going to say, do you know what, like this, this is the real problem, <coughs> excuse me, that needs to be solved. Um, and so, yeah, that I'm going to talk about one case study in particular where, you know, there is payment, there is employment opportunities. Um, it's super, super important, right? Um, but it is just, it's just creating that space. It's creating that space. And I'll talk a little bit about this when I talk about one of the projects we've, we've done, done with the design museum, just the effects of what that space does. And I, I do kind of mean kind of, you know, the, the physical space, the metaphorical space, the mental space, but that's what's really important for us. Accountability is super important to us. Why I said kind of, you know, um, obstacles of um, clients, kind of almost the easy bit. 
it's getting it's getting around the obstacles of young people so especially when we've done stuff uh, digitally you know how can you tell if a young person's feeling down for the day or something's happened before you know there's there's different nuances to working with young people um and so being accountable you know whether we, we did something a couple of weeks ago where we we sent um sort of looking at the, the kind of chaos of, of the end of it just the left here basically sent a sort of materials pack to a young person who didn't have particular materials from the workshops could have just chucked that in an envelope and off you go but actually we were like here's a handwritten note here's some other stuff and also like thanks for taking part we really really like appreciate that she so basically just like pulled us aside to say like honestly like thank you so much for just writing that note like that meant a lot and so like those little things that you can do for us with young people is the most important thing. And, you know, it keeps us, keeps us honest, keeps us true, keeps us busy and keeps us learning basically that, that, that accountability piece. So everyone uh, loves some obligatory uh, logo boards, right? So we work with a broad sector of organizations um, across the board. So whether that is councils, charities, brands, NGBs, um, educational organizations, cultural institutions, um, startups, you name it. Um, we work kind of really broadly. Um, it's kind of sometimes strange when someone says to me like, oh my God, you work with some amazing people. And I kind of never really sort of like take a step back and go, wow, that is a great list because I'm just more focused on what we're actually doing with them. But, you know, we've, we've, it's just a real privilege just to sort of like, you know, we're doing what you're doing to us today into their, into their worlds. And, you know, Active Surrey is so different to the London Youth Games, who's so different to Basketball England, who's so different to, to Capes or to University Arts London. So, um, and we all basically have this, this you know, this shared vision for, you know, it's, it's not, not just about the future, it's, it's right now. The future is not going to exist unless we sort some stuff out right now. But when I kind of speak to people, I don't really need to kind of go, oh yeah, so we really, really like young people because of this reason or, you know, we spot a gap. Someone said to me, did you spot a gap in the market to, uh, to start triple double? And I kind of quivered. I was like, definitely not. Um, so, you know, we just kind of get to the good stuff as such. So what we do um, in terms of the text results is, is this really. So I guess the stuff on the left is probably what you're expecting me to talk about today. But I guess when I'm talking about what we do, it's really about the stuff on the other two columns, really. So you know, most of the time organizations are coming to us and almost they, they have that fear or that lack of ambition of working with young people. Um, and it still baffles me every single time that, that conversation happens. So kind of upskilling and giving, you know, research and insights to those organizations at the same time of giving it to the young people. And then a lot of the time it's around, yeah, it's increasing engagement, whether that's numbers or in different ways. And it is really kind of changing the perception of some of those uh, logos you've just seen because, you know, everybody is is well i don't know if everyone ever, ever will because then triple double almost probably won't exist but i think people are slowly starting to understand actually the value of when you're co-creating with young people and like what it can actually do um and for me like you know if we can all make our lives easier and we can you know we can get all our work done by the end of the day so we can go off and you know spend it in the sun then why is that a bad thing for young people for organizations so um you know changing that perception of of of, um, of, of those organizations. And, you know, you be the judge of kind of some of the impacts uh, that we do, um, but basically for young people, it is giving them those life employability skills. Um, the project, um, I just talked about the material pack, that's basically all centered around the future of work, question mark, that was the project. And so we're producing, um, producing an outcome from the young people's work that they've done and I'm like, that's in my portfolio, that's in my CV. I don't care where I go off and work. I don't care what I'm going to do. If I'm going to go apply to be a lifeguard, it's in my CV. If I'm going to apply to be a designer, it's on my CV. So making sure that anything we're doing, they can really use. I talked about the kind of the, the rewards, the payment. I'll, I'll talk about a bit more in detail. And just basically giving them the opportunity to um, have a set, to, to really kind of like instigate change. And, you know, we do it in our own way and I, you know, every time a new thing comes in, you know, it's another piece of the puzzle. We're never going to be, you know, we're in a pursuit. We're not in a, we're not ticking boxes because again, triple double won't exist once we've done everything. So, you know, we do our bit with who we can. And then for organizations, yeah, like I talked about that brand perception, the, the, the upskilling and knowledge sharing, you know, I will talk a little bit about numbers in particular, but sort of, yeah, increasing those, those numbers, which, you know, 
that's kind of what you know the sectors are going for um but sort of like you know bums on seats numbers is not just just one piece of it and everybody in these sectors are pretty good at kind of the numbers bit but they're not so good at unpicking them and doing something with the numbers and that's where we where we come in so um sorry to any of the clients who may be watching this but um, i'll talk to you about that afterwards <laughs> so that's some tech slides that is probably going to be the most boring slides of this whole webinar so let's get into some visual stuff now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just double i'm going to stop my share and i'm going to just make sure that this is set up for video which if i'm correct remember if i'm how to do this amy uh, Bear with me. There you go. So optimize for video clip. Sorry. So this first case study, this first project is going to bring to life everything I've just said, hopefully. So this is a, a pretty pacey video, so pay attention. <laughs> Kind of just makes me chuckle every time I see that. <laughs> uh, just getting from the idea to of just that video, that's a whole different thing as well. But yeah, so I don't know if anybody has seen this. Um, I'm currently waiting for 50 more copies to come from Tommy. So I guess first of all, if anybody wants a copy uh, for their class, we can we can get that sorted. That's not a problem. Um, you can also go onto Amazon to uh, to buy a copy for 4.99. Um, I guess I'm going to start with this almost in backwards. So I talked about um, uh, rewards and stuff. So every time a copy is sold, um, the boys get a royalty, basically. So every single time a copy is sold, they get coin, uh, which is, you know, awesome. It's just really, really great. Um, and I've realized as soon as I start talking about this, I've completely missed off a very, very key slide <laughs> of what, what's happening with this, but I'll get to that in a second. But I guess like, when when the boys and Jack, who's one of our superstar teacher collaborators, and I hope hopefully there's more on, on the call to come here. Um, when yeah, when when um they just walked into our studio, and I just I just saw the potential of what this thing could be. I didn't know exactly what it was going to become or what it is still becoming, 
But this is kind of the way that triple double works is seeing the potential in what young people can do. And so we could have just said, you know what, we're going to just do the first part of the project. We're going to get it released and then we're going to close it. Actually, no, like going off and pitching this, getting this, you know, it was a bit of a strange dragon's den moment. Like, can we take this off the table? Um, me and Jack kind of just looking at each other going, what's what on earth is going on here? Um, and it's turned into to what it is. So it launched at the beginning of um, 2021, I believe there's around, um, Tony will have to pick me up on this, but I believe around maybe about eight, 16, 17, 18,000 copies that were sold in the first year. And one, the key side I missed off. So at the end of last year, we started working with uh, Surrey County Council's um, sports team, uh, Active Surrey, but you saw the logo. And they purchased um, three and a half thousand copies of the game, which, uh, was given to the holiday and food program provision. So three and a half thousand families over Christmas this year were given a copy of Active Snap along with everything else that was happening to support the food, the food um, parcels. And um, so <clears throat> I should have actually, there should be an image in here of, 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 of them holding uh, the card game. So apologies for that. Um, but how amazing is that, right? You know, what came from the, the six young looking guys and the not, not so young looking guy in the middle um is now getting you know you know young person who's on benefits related school meals is getting a copy of this for christmas like that's the power of design that's the power of working with young people and you know this thing is kind of just continuing to to grow um and you know we are the you know i'll talk about a bit my about my role um as we kind of move through the the webinar but being on the phone to the the sales director of Tommy negotiating a price is not usually it's not kind of what I learn at school, but you just have to do it. So, just an amazing something I just feel so privileged to be involved with. And um, yeah, we're excited to see what happens next. We've got conversations around it getting distributed into NHS trusts, other brands who want to do their version of it, and you know, comes from the mind of six six young people basically. And you know, our job is to to just facilitate um their their complete um ambition cleverness and everything between us I was say genius but maybe that's going too far <laughs> young people definitely genius um so yeah just some of the some of the things we created from it so that was a bit of a focus i'm going to fly through some of our other work um before getting to a uh, sort of a, a wider case study later on so on the flip side of of uh, crazy toy games we also do um campaign work so i'll let this video run I love to jump. You're kidding me, right? Basketball is much better than swimming. Climbing is way cooler than table tennis. I like trampolining because you can jump really high. We can also work with swimming skills and also diving deep under the water. It's funny when my mum puts my brothers in the same kind of shorts. I love to jump. To splash my little sisters. So that was the Leisure Centre uh, Bet Better's summer campaign last year. Um, you might have noticed some of the GoPro footage. So again, it's just kind of like, even when we're doing a youth orientated campaign, um, how do we bring that? I mean, the kind of images, the two images on the on the right there, kind of, you know, it's, it's the grey's knee. It's not, it's it's just kids being kids. And so, you know, we gave the, the boys and their sister GoPros in the swimming pool and, you know, giving some underwater direction and, you know, the outcomes for it. And so, even at kind of that level when it's a much more like really commercially driven kind of project um, for, for the brand. Um, how do you get young people involved with it? What's the kind of point of view on it? So we got to work with uh, amazing film uh, filmmaker Jack on this and um, Jack Flynn and um, a photographer I've always wanted to work with for a while called Dan Wilton. And yeah, it just was the kind of the dream team getting you know this crazy shoot happening and uh i was uh, there's some funny behind the scenes photos of uh, me lying on the floor on the basketball court and yeah we're all jumping in the swimming pool and all sorts so um 
we do that side of it. We also do brand work. So this was a project to get um, girls into STEM careers. So with an amazing organization called uh, Wise Campaign, if you, if you don't know about that. We do digital work. So whether we do mobile apps, uh, native apps, um, sorry, tablet and mobile native apps, so stuff you get on app stores, whether we do web apps, whether we do campaign sites, um, you know, we, we do, you know, for us again, like, it's a little bit like when you kind of, I don't know where someone says like we're doing a print project, it's like, there's so much noise out there. Like, what can you do with digital to really sort of like make it stand out? Um, and we do another little project plug here. I don't know if anyone's seen this before. Um, if you have maybe did or didn't know Triple Double was behind this, but this is a project the Design Museum released called the Idea Machine. So uh, this was created for school students to quickly generate ideas in under 60 seconds. So, um, Oh, the lights just gone off there. Um, so I'm just going to wave. This is going to happen a few times because you've got sensitive lights. Oh, geez. Um, so, you know, we're super passionate, obviously, about design, colour, typography, and everything goes between. But what we're really excited by is how young people use what we do. So these were some of the images we got back from, from one school using the idea machine. So yeah, the idea machine.org, and um, you can uh, start generating ideas straight away. Um, and I think kind of when we're doing digital work as well, this is, I mean, it's not really a glamorous way to show like upskilling, but you know, what's really important for us, we've got something coming up at the minute, actually, so sort of a youth focused app, um, is obviously just getting in front of who you're making things for. And, you know, design does, is rough around the edges. It doesn't all look kind of, um, perfect all the time. So this is just some of the insights into, into, uh, sort of the digital work we do. We also do a lot of our, um, I mean, a lot of the time people are coming to us with um, uh, sort of almost one line briefs and talk about that, but we also generate lots of things ourselves. You know, we, we, we don't sort of sit. So this is what we did for our fifth birthday last year. Um, it's a bit weird, a bit wonderful, but you know, this, why not? So we just made a small video game with a, with a character of number five, eating coins, cake, basketballs. Why not, right? So. Uh, we have lots, of, if you haven't got the notes already, um, <laughs> <don't let> up, <laughs> if you haven't got a sense already, we have, we're pretty playful in the work we do. Um, this is a, a thing we run on Instagram, good plug there, uh, called Card of the Week. So this is uh, documenting, uh, this is a personal project of mine, so documenting my old personal collection of basketball cards. And if you ever receive a triple double, uh, business card they are uh, my personal collection for when I was eight years old upwards so uh, nobody ever chucks one away put it that way um, I'm going to talk about sort of some of the photography and visual content work we do but we also do a series called spotted this week so we're kind of in and around where we are looking at kind of what's happening in the environment um, centered around the, those themes of sport youth and education and getting creative with captioning so the the one on the left is uh, basket, uh, deflated basketballs in uh, in Lidl. So it's obviously dribble in the middle of Lidl. So, you know, if I could see everybody, I'd expect everybody to be smiling for that. But I don't know. I don't know what everyone's comedy level is, but we'll have to see. <laughs> and yeah, we do um, lots of resources for young people. Um, and we're constantly challenging well, what should a resource be. So this project, which we've done with Basketball England, is basically um, a two and a half thousand um, 11 to 16 year olds co-creating their new team brand and kits. So this is what was sent out to the community managers and the parents basically. So why does it have to be a black and white A4 piece of paper? Um, that's, that's what we're always kind of challenging. So we, we ran remote workshops and then kind of working with the young people sort of floats together to sort of become something a uh, sort of high fidelity. So I've got some samples to my left. So that's currently in, in production and we're figuring out like what's what's coming coming next. And again, like whilst obviously this is just a concept, obviously, you know, the way our minds work is not to sort of go, okay, so you want kit, so let's stop kit. It's, you know, how can this thing exist in, in physical space, in digital space? You know, what music do you associate it with? Like all of these different um, sort of cultural touch points and touch points. And, everybody on this call knows about young people they're not just into one thing right so you know how i how is your project coming to life in their favorite game how is your project coming to life in uh, their after school walk it's things like that 
we do lots of workshops and, and hands-on um, making stuff. Um, it's personally one of the things I've missed the most over the past few years. So it's great to sort of be sort of getting back into that. And, you know, sometimes we do stuff really, really simple, paint, boiler suits, making swimming suit costumes, because why not? And other stuff gets a bit more complex. I talked about the, the future of the future of work. This is another resource we did um, for the London Youth Games. So this was for uh, what usually would be their spring um, sort of physical activity session. Um, so this got distributed to 8,000 students at schools. And again, kind of just, you know, we, we sort of, uh, we talk about this notion of sort of like putting things into like creating stuff that's just going to fall into the landfill. So the London Youth Games are really big around, you know, accessibility, disability. They didn't ask us to create a series of characters that represent accessible sport. They asked us to create the resources, but this is what we did. And so they were kind of like, have never sort of thought about that. And how do you bring to life a rugby player who's got who's got one prosthetic leg? We obviously give them a mohawk, you know. So, you know, this is just because it's something that might be seen on the bottom right hand corner of a page doesn't mean it shouldn't be the best, the best quality it can be. Um, I mentioned obviously um, around sort of like numbers and data in the sector, but kind of reporting on kind of uh, for other people. So this is one of the impact reports we did for the, the London Youth Games as well. So, you know, again, it's like, why does an impact report have to be humdrum? Why can't it go up a level? And we've just finished doing um, actually the, the HAF provision for Active Surrey, where I mentioned about Active Snap. So that's a two minute animation. So it doesn't need to be a hundred page report. So I think how and what is being reported on is really important for us. Because otherwise you don't, you know, the, the media, the government portrays certain certain picture i mean i this i would love to have a conversation with all of you of sort of like what should be reported and you all know it's what you're doing inside the classroom um added together with other bits and pieces that's really creating the impact so you know how do we report on what you're doing in the classroom that's the kind of stuff that i'm interested in we i mentioned we also do uh, lots of visual content projects so whether this is still life photography um, and set design so um that is a real pair of false teeth in the bot in the top left, but that unfortunately is a fake poo. So it's a, it's a comedy poo, but there is a poo because why not? When you do stuff about emojis, you've got to have the emoji poo, right? Um, and then we've got what we've got there: perfectly cooked bacon to to mark the, the to mirror the the bacon emoji, um, and the getting hold of red and yellow sort of rhubarb custard looking pills to match that emoji is is, is quite quite was quite difficult actually, but we got there in the end. So moving from kind of still life, whether we're doing um, work with people as well. So this is a project we did with a great organisation called Bike Works about um, accessibility within um, cycling in London. And we do the weird and wonderful in between. And this is a whole separate conversation. And even though we're based in, in Hackney, uh, previously we were in Tower Hamlets. Um, so as well as kind of thinking about locations, I've talked about Spot this week, we're really keen on kind of like what's in our local area. So these are some of the shots we, we took from um, uh, our, our sort of old studio at Town Hamlet. So I laugh that we've got Weatherspoons next door, although I'm a fan. Um, but I think for us, wherever we end up, wherever we're gonna be, it's sort of, we, we like to kind of think global, but also think really, really local. So um, anybody in particular who's London based on the call, like we should definitely, definitely talk more. So that's some visual stuff. So, I guess just to finish off to kind of close the other side of kind of what the, the triple double is all about before getting onto my story is that the famous C word and uh, the famous B word, two very difficult words to describe. I'll start by saying that cultural behavior is what as a founder, I do not have it perfect, but I'm working extremely hard to develop this across everything we do. And so really this is where we start. You'll and they are in that order. So you might be surprised that creativity is number three, but for us having integrity, like the subjects who we're working with, there is too many people out there trying to basically take advantage and not really help. And so we've got to have our radars on really, really high to be like, actually, does this person share our integrity for it? The second part is responsibility, like working with young people. I know from firsthand experience, by not just that, that small interaction could have a you know could go one of two ways could completely change you know their, their lives what they do you know if it wasn't for certain kind of education past my experience maybe i wouldn't be doing kind of design today um 
and that's really important and then obviously how do we bring to life creativity i don't know any other way unfortunately so i'll be a terrible accountant um although although accountants are creative of course um but yeah design and creativity is, is what we do culturally like as a team we're a small team um we have freelancers we bring on interns we bring on teachers um but for me it's around kind of creating that open contribution you know as the founder i don't know everything and i'm the first to kind of put my hands up and go i got this wrong um but it's about keeping people um themselves and the studio moving forward and if anybody uh does anybody know what a triple double is you're going to be at my you're going to be top of the list top of the class if you do so anyone, anyone want to shout out and don't you can't google it can't google it now i'll know i cheated i looked it up before the poll no 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 dnt <laughs> association any anybody uh jim do you want to have a guess uh, i have no idea no idea at all it's something a a, a, a part of a heavy drinking session start with a triple and work down to the double i don't know i don't know tell me that says that says that 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 i'm getting insight into your uh, into your your thing there jim <laughs> it says more about me than it does about you eh? <laughs> exactly exactly brilliant so a, tri a, a triple double uh so I'll, cl I'll close with the slide but yeah basically as triple double is a basketball term um that is my uh design of basketball for the benefit of young people is, is my two things. I can't live with it with either. So I play since I was seven. I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a fanatic, but basically kind of on the court and off the court uh, team is at the center of everything we do. So kind of the dynamics of team and is really important. And we have some fun with the brand as well. So if you go onto our 404 page, which most people will never discover because you'll find, you know, find the wrong page, you'll find the very famous uh, Michael Jordan crying me because why not? If you're going to create a 404 page, let's make it the best 404 page you can. <laughs> so a triple double is when uh, a player gets double figures in three stat categories. So 12 rebounds, 25 points, 10 assists. So it's kind of basketball's equivalent of a, um, of a, of a hat trick, but it's a kind of, it's a good representation because it's sort of an individual performance that's at the highest level, but it's kind of, they're helping the wider team as well so it's uh you know um it just the name was of the name was available and that's that's where it stuck so i guess final thing to say i guess um it's probably some of the longest longest text i guess some of some kind of the responses we get um so Gemma, who's we work with through one of the design museum projects is what she said about making basically making her feel like she can strive for more than she's capable of and basically just thinking it's going to be any other year, but actually, you know, if I work hard enough on stuff like this, I can do whatever I need to do. Um, and, you know, something, probably the best bit of it is just, yeah, really good at listening to our feedback, adapting to it. So yeah, when you're working to, with, with that particular group, they, they hated some of the stuff we did and they told us why uh, we didn't take it personally. We just, we got it on board and we made it better. And then um, from Charlie, who was uh, the ex uh, COO of Basketball England from that project, um, he talks a lot about, yeah, just making sure that, you know, you know, tapping into the skills that we've got learning from. And, you know, I think activating is a really interesting word. Actually, I've got another term that someone said to me around like the type of stuff you're doing. Um, but yeah, we create a really radical concept, um, but it can be embedded. You know, everything we do is not just some sort of concept sitting in the air. It's actually like it can be done, um, which, which for us is really, really important. So that is triple double. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Does, does anybody want to interject, ask any questions? Hopefully that made all sense before I kind of go one level down into my journey. Yeah, if you, I don't mind just asking a question. So it sounds like a lot of it is like a big kind of project or something you've sort of been approached by another company for. And so it's all sort of just based around just bringing the young people on that journey with you? Or is there, like I said, those groups, does the, does the client come with those groups of students? Or so how, how does that work? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of this in the, in the uh, kind of the main case study. But typically, what some organisations will come to us with two, two briefs. One will be something along the lines of, our top priority is to get girls into export. That's your brief. <laughs> like, okay uh that, that's that's our top top priority and the reason why it's a top priority is because it, it's going to affect our female game our men's game our communities our funders our sponsors because it's, it's driving upwards 
Or they'll say, our top priority is to get girls into export, and we've got this idea to which we'll either kind of unpick it and go, actually, what you need to do is go back to kind of the number one brief. Rarely will people come to us and say, we've got such a specific need. And if they do come to us, what we'll say is, well, are you thinking about this, 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 and this? And we can still deliver it within your time frame, within your budget, but you're coming to us for X, but you're not considering Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, because, um, you know, young people don't just like see something, interact with it, and then kind of like stop, like hate to break it to you, but like they've got higher expectations than that. And then I guess the third, the, the third side, Aaron, is like we are always going to people with those same ideas. So um, the kind of possible app project I talked about had really come from the fact that um, I asked one of our clients, like, why are, why are kind of certain organizations not doing more? For putting digital in like sport activity kind of support at the top of top of the agenda he said well that's a funny thing let me introduce you to this council who's then gone here who's then gone here and all of a sudden actually there is somebody there they just need help for it so we are and it comes from my own just kind of i can't i can't just sort of sit at my desk waiting for something to arrive in my inbox it doesn't work like that so really kind of um going to people and we're not going you need you need work we're saying is have you solved this problem and it's based on the fact that we're so embedded within these worlds it's not like i'm going oh there's a gap for digital engagement in sport it's like this is a huge problem that exists and we're going to try to solve one, one part of it that's just your question yeah thank you does anyone else have any anything else they want to share anything any questions So quite, I guess everyone's just had, I mean, we've all had a really long day, right? So forget that. Uh, right, so let me reshare my screen. Okay. So I had this written as my story, but I changed it to my journey because I think story feels like it has an end and I don't think I'm ever going to be at the end. Um, I'm a work in progress. I'm learning all the time. I, I think I said to Tony on the, on the podcast again, like, when I stop learning, I'll stop and I'll do something else. And um, there's some stuff I can't quite say just yet, but some big changes that happened this year, which I think like evolving evolution is a really big thing for me. Innovation is kind of when you are doing a different thing under the same roof, but for, I guess the work, what I've had to do is I've had to like, I've had to build multiple roofs I haven't been able to just kind of innovate within the same space. I haven't been able to just kind of, you know, I don't have my kind of home comfort. So I've had, in fact, I've had them taken away from me through my kind of career. So I kind of, I'm used to kind of evolving and, and keep going. And so that's, that's why I think journey is a, a great, a great representation. So first point, like how do you get into design? This is how I got into design. Um, I just grew up playing video games. <laughs> that is just what I did and, and basketball. My, um, me and my friends, honestly, it was like, do you want to come for a bike ride? No, I want to play video games. It's not really a great uh, message for someone who's now kind of focused on sport, but uh, in particular, this game uh, is, yeah, it was a lot of hours spent on Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I have got the Sonic Lego that I need to buy. That's uh, on my pending list, but a lot, a lot of times uh, spent on this game and this game, NBA Jam. If anybody doesn't know NBA Jam, um, you should check it. I've got a pending conversation with the commentator of NBA Jam, who is a very famous, uh, um, exuberant games commentator, and he's hopefully going to record the next triple double voicemail. So watch this space. There you go. <laughs> Again, if a voice, why can't the voicemail be the best possible thing? So I kind of. I kind of got into sort of design thinking like, like who, whose job is it to kind of like decide that speed is eight and it's red and three points is seven and it's green. Like whose job is that? Whose job is it to create those graphics? Whose job is it to come up with that music to decide that coins spin a certain way? So I guess kind of curiosity has really kind of driven me. Um, and so that was my kind of first like, early question. I didn't kind of know what it, what it meant, but it was because I was just like, I need to play again. But I just had these moments where I'd be like, who has done that? Like, 
why does this thing kind of feel like it works so well? Like some, who's made that decision? You know, it's too, too young to sort of like warrant, oh, it's, it's a designer who's done that. And so kind of as I got a bit older and I, I went to um, went to school, um, so I'm kind of skipping primary and going straight to secondary here. The kind of two challenges I had was this. So I talked about I didn't have a great education. And yeah, basically I was told I have to play rugby and all I really wanted to do was play basketball. And so I'm kind of quite literally questioning my teacher saying, you've, I know you've got to get me active, but like, can't I be active my own way? Why don't I, don't, you know, I don't want to be going in the rain and the mud. Like I'm a basketball player, I've got style. If you, see, if, you see my, if, my, if you see my sneakers, you can't play rugby with that. And eventually they kind of just sort of gave up with me um, and just said, fine, do basketball. We, uh, we brought it onto the curriculum. We, we started a small team. We controversially had a boys versus girls match as well, which obviously at the time, at the time uh, felt right, but wouldn't that. But um, being on the boys team, we did win. So I don't mind who I'm playing with. I'm always competitive. But um, And it just kind of, it just got me thinking of like, there's surely got to be a better way to get sort of, you know, um, young people active. You know, what, what, if they don't want to do rugby and they want to do basketball, why, why, why can't they? And then on the sort of design side, as I go see a career advisor, this is what they told me. I went in to see my careers advisor with an, with an actual idea, like 14, 15, that I've got this idea of what I want to do for a career. I'm doing a job for you, which meant basically I wouldn't be doing A-levels, I'd go do a B-tech and design. And I was told I was going to fail. The amount of times I've been told in my life that I'm going to fail, to be honest, I just expect it <laughs> and it just kind of like on both on sort of two 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 sides of kind of like my school journey on the sports side of being told I can't do this and then I'm I'm can't I'm being can't I'm being told I can't do that and I'm just thinking like what on earth is going on here like I'm I'm you know I, I I've got really good attendance I'm generally well behaved I do my work like and you're just sort of striking this young person down what is up with that and so kind of to the people who say to me, oh yeah, um, did, did you like spot a gap in the market for this, this, this triple double thing? It's been, it's my purpose and it is literally been a seed that's been growing and or whatever you want to call it. You know, that creative advisor did me a favor uh, as such by asking the right question. And it's something that I feel I'm responsible for to make sure every young person I can help doesn't, have to go through that so I you know I didn't I don't come from a um, sort of you know, economically poor background but I come from a pretty socially poor background just a lot of things happening in my family and so kind of school was my way of trying to get away from that and then at school I'm getting the same thing I'm just like it's time to sort this out it's time to sort this out and so yeah um 14 year old me um with a lot more hair um I don't I can't compare my style to how I was 14 now probably probably the same to be honest I don't know if it's good or bad but that's the question I was asking myself there's got to be a better way to engage young people in sport and education um and so yeah I left I, I went to I went to college um and that was really the kind of the pivotal that was the best bit of my education experience between 16 and 18 because what my tutors were doing which is what I said to my school teachers do which I'm sure all of you are doing <laughs> um is kind of they just understood me for me and they they sort of my college tutors like nurtured me and allowed me to um explore to try things out but they kind of saw the fact that it's no different to what happened when the boys walked in with the active snack concept like i had this thought of like i'm going to run with this i'm going to make this happen and they tapped into that and they nurtured it and i didn't get that at school and so you know especially when you're going through kind of those you know, 15 16 17 you know you're, you're trying to figure out who you are as a human, you're trying to be more adult than you actually are. There's, you, you know, your body's changing, your mind's changing. And so just for me, it was this real moment where um, they really just got me. And I just, that's where I started to kind of almost just start to unlock some of what I can now show you today, which was super exciting for me. So I went to study at LCC. <laughs> I wish it looked like this all the time. It's quite a lot of that all the time. But um, London College of Communication, Elephant Castle. So can still remember yeah being sort of dropped off uh going going there like 18 going to london i just like what is this place like what have i got myself in for um and really i guess my experience i mean at 14 15 i, I kind of knew what i wanted to do with my my sort of um 
college choices and then kind of at 16 17 the reason why i specifically took this course um to be honest wasn't for the name people are like yeah ual is a great name and sure i mean no one's ever asked me what did you get a new degree and when did you get your degree or where did you get your degree but i specifically took this course because they gave um uh, a select group of students each each year to go out go out on um, a structured year in industry so the students basically have to kind of prove that they were kind of ready for it there was work to do on top of your coursework and then you basically you were sort of supported during but it was kind of a blank canvas it was like what, what do you do in my case this is what i did um and then you kind of return and you sort of back to sort of your well, your fourth and final year and sort of bringing that kind of industry and um industry and um, sort of education experiences together so i can't almost tell you where the kind of like 16 year old Paul is going yeah this is what I want to do but it just I've always been one of those people that's like I'm going to give it a go and whatever happens like I've said I've given it a go no regrets so yeah I basically spent um I did six internships I did two months in Tokyo I did three months in Berlin um can't look at my hair there crazy top left crazy 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 um did some weird and wonderful things, whether, yeah, it was building an Adidas Superstar out of 250 shoe boxes uh, that I just happened to find on the street on that guy. Um, whether it was doing, uh, yeah, traveling to Berlin, seeing talks, um, doing a, a uh, creating a music video at the G20 protest. I wouldn't recommend running away from riot police with fluorescent handmade sign, but it was pretty fun because we actually got away in the end. But if you look at the G20 protest bank, you search those on the garden, you're going to see those signs, um, you know, entering competitions um, doing kind of like graphics for like live cinema events for, for Watchmen. So, you know, being brief to create sleazy posters, that's your brief. Like, you know, this is not stuff that you, uh, you, you get prep for uh, in kind of the classroom all the time. Um, you know, spending time in, in Tokyo, going to see the, the Studio Ghibli Museum, a uh, pretty special place. In Berlin, going to the Typography Museum, the Buchstaben Museum, for a midnight delivery of typography. You know, these weird and kind of wonderful experiences, going to see eBoy, the original pixel graphics uh, team in Berlin. That was like a particularly amazing moment. That moment. Um, having breakfast with John Mader in Tokyo. So the guy uh, on, the, on the right with his hands out. So he was the, the ex-president of, of Rhode Island School of Design. Legend. The other guy to his left in the black t-shirt, Eric Cruz, who was my uh, boss in Tokyo. Uh, he also, you know, if I'm if I can be half the boss and creative that he was, uh, he was unbelievable. Like some of the people that I got to kind of work with in, in in industry, and again, it's just sort of similar people, just sort of were able to kind of nurture. You know, they know they didn't they knew I wasn't perfect, but it's they they saw potential and they sort of nurtured it. And if we speak to Eric now, he just says to me like, "What haven't you done?" like he's like is that as good as it could have been like he knows he knows what can be done but you know i get really attached to sort of people who really sort of um who sort of you know just just willing to nurture and i think it's just so so important um i did my first uh first public talk to about uh three 350 people in tokyo i'm 19 there like had i done that before i um i was contacting somebody this morning about coming to do a talk and i was like what, which one should i say let's start with the tokyo one um, doing doing a project around the London Olympics, like seeing that space before um, before a brick was laid, was amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And so I kind of just had this insight into um, industry and education and how you can kind of put them together, and kind of me identifying the problems of education that I had and seeing the opportunities within industry. I was like, gotta connect these connect these up somewhere. And so, yeah, return to final year university. And then this is what I'm told. I shouldn't be working. This is literally what I was told by my course tutor, commercial brands. Like, I mean, what is that? <laughs> what is that about? Is, is it, you know, I, 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 we all wear brands. Like, why can't we work with them? I have ethics and we don't work with certain people. But, you know, is this kind of education advice that kind of a bit older, you know, do I, do I need that? And so, again, I just have the same reaction. And again, I just have the same question there's got to be a better way to engage. So graduating in 2010, um, up until today, um, I, I think I've got the least uh, 
well, I've definitely got the least amount of uh, uh, classroom experience here, but yeah, I've been working with young people inside and outside the curriculum, both personally and now through tri Triple Double officially since 2010, basically. So uh, 12, 12 years as such, although obviously I'm not the experts like yourselves in terms of your, your being in the room all the time. So I was thinking like, how can I summarize Fast Forward Today, the answer to this question? And really, there is probably only one sort of, um, I guess maybe for this context, one way to bring it to life. And it's this project. So I'm gonna let this film run. First thing we're doing will be explaining a little bit about the history of emojis. Getting them to really think about that emoji isn't just a picture, that it's actually a form of communication. And actually there is ideas, there is design, there's craft behind the actual design of emojis. Next we'll be doing a task called Crazy Eights where they fold a piece of paper into eight sections and they quickly sketch out eight ideas. It's not about making refined designs. And the idea is that they'll create four ideas of an emoji about themselves and then uh, four ideas for either an emoji representing a feeling, so happy, sad, gloomy, cringe. I've done a synchronised swimming emoji, one when you can't believe that someone's done something so stupid, tired, where your fringe keeps going in your eyes. Next we flip straight into size, so drawing things small, drawing things large, how is that affecting how things look? So far the students have like completely taken on board the whole idea of designing emojis. The students behind me have started working on the computer to digitise the designs, to start seeing how the hand-drawn designs can be sort of developed even further on the computer. It's really good because it kind of helps you socialise more and teaches you how to talk to new people and get to know new people. And it also helps develop your art skills, so it's, it's really good. I think that it's much better than doing art at school because it's more relaxed and you can sort of go in any direction you want, whereas at school it's quite focused. I feel like we have a lot more freedom here than what we do at school and I think it'll help me to be more creative. We're at the stage now where everyone's just about to present what they've been up to today. It's going to be a whirlwind tour of ideas and lots of fascinating emojis that have been created, what we've now called the Emoji Club. Confidence-wise, they presenting their work to their peers has been something that they've really developed. Obviously, first off, they've all been quite quiet and shy, but as the weeks have gone by, they really have started to stand up and, and show their work and talk about it with a lot more confidence. The real beauty of this weekend is seeing people come together on a Saturday morning um, to do something they love. I never had anything like this when I was younger, being able to come here today. Just see the, the, the students having fun and understanding that design is a career um, is, you know, very, very rewarding. So, I talk about kind of like space we create, um, not everything <laughs> not everything we do is that well doc uh, documented, et cetera. So uh, I, wish it, I wish it was so busy doing the delivery that you forget to, to document it. But um, I think that's just a really good example of like how we can bring together, you know, something as a 16 by 16 pixel design challenge and emoji and blow it out into getting them to understand um, what that can, what that can be. And I think, I think what's I talk about kind of like sort of trying to use some of the themes of obstacles, which I think is um, hopefully coming across. But how do you take a challenge like a digital challenge, like an emoji, like you know, and kind of allow young people and students to work offline, to work online, and so things like kind of you know the grid sheets, you know, confining them, um, as well as kind of um, we sort of set up sort of software, you know, for the for I guess, I guess young people who couldn't you know, may never have used Illustrator or Photoshop before, they could piece together their emoji. We allowed the young people to not go onto the computer if they didn't want to. And then there were some that just sort of, you know, completely rolled with it. So everybody could kind of, within the same parameters, within the same methodology, could could kind of flex to it without being, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a software project, it was around, it was an outcome project. And so over the, over really the past sort of 12 years, kind of we have developed uh, our own methodologies you know, we've we've gone into companies and spoken like, how do you co-create with with young people? Um, 
and that's for us that's you know it's our kind of our secret sauce our magic sauce as such and it's nothing it's nothing that doesn't is, is invented it's nothing kind of like secret in terms of no one else is doing it but it's kind of it's kind of a combination and and i think ultimately everything we're doing is giving these young people you know experiences so they can learn how to think not just apply skills you know if i if i if i could take the skills i learned in school the skills i'm using now is all about how you know how am i thinking to use them um and so that really kind of you know lassoes up everything we we do um i was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago and they used this term um force multiplication multiplication you tell i'm not going to math right they said paul this is what you're kind of doing and i was like never never heard that term where's it come from so it was actually it comes from a military term it's the notion of um you give somebody an ak-47 the impact of what they can do with that and it's like you, you're kind of that's what you're doing with your work and i it's i'm still trying to figure out how it fits in but i really like the idea of like somehow i managed to get away with bringing maths back in even though i'm, I'm not great at maths um but they were kind of really on the money um as to sort of like the work we do is giving young people tools to go off and do something else you know we're not really setting kind of barriers you know um if, if you ended up doing emojis just just drawn then that's success if you did draw on a computer then that's success um it's kind of next time you think about approaching a task where it's getting you to to, to create something um what's the what's the tools that you're being given um and so just to finish off yeah these are some of the sort of early shots from kind of my first project kind of officially which was for um the design museum on their design ventura project obviously the dnt associations covered this before but i'm one of the ogs of the uh of the project uh being being involved in in since year two so this is when we actually used to go out to to schools to do to do workshops to do paper prototyping to do brainstorming um and I guess I've just been so involved on the project. I was helping out with helping them prep the presentations, um, writing their speeches. And in year two, basically, um, you know, pretty happy with this. Uh, my, the school I work with, the Warworth Academy, won the award. And um, I think this we're close to coming to the end of this section. But I think what was great is when I sort of first met these these uh, all boys school uh, off Old Kent Road in South London, like a, a pretty rough school. They you know they were just they were just distracted they were not um you know the teacher was having difficulty with kind of like getting them interested and you know i turn up in the in the classroom they go you don't look a teacher and just one by one i just basically walked around sat with the groups and i'm like i'm here to listen and you know they went off to win it in the end and they came back the following year to to present the this sort of the the check from the, the product that they win tapped on the show I'm like paul how's it going like how's it going We've been in the Design Museum's new time capsule. We've been in the new standard Radio Times. The the kind of confidence, the presentation skills. I honestly was just I can always go back to that moment because it was just like it was just pretty staggering. And whatever those four boys are doing now, they can take that experience and take it into whatever else they're doing. And that's just basically by creating that space, giving them those skills to, to do what they need to. And it's funny because it's come full circle because we're back to where active snap is and even going more uh sorry even going back to um um full circle yeah it's kind of the skills we're doing then the skills we're doing in our kind of our day-to-day -day. um so it's just funny how it's kind of come full full circle like and you know i've got a lot of um yeah loops or something kind of what i was experienced when i'm 14 i'm now working with 14 year olds and seeing it and so there's everybody who knows me kind of everything seems to sort of connect up um it's not in a smooth way but it all kind of seems to seems to to join up um so final bit of this section so i realized there was actually a bit more um was i guess just to kind of close close the chapter on kind of what happened just before td or such so um yeah i worked at four companies across the industry both in-house roles and uh, an advertising agency a small creative agency before signed triple double six and a half years ago um so that's, that's how old we are as it stands um quite the thing that probably always baffles people like, oh yeah you've got you must have had lots of kind of um you know you must have had lots of clients who wanted to come over from you that's like really fine job and all, and all of that i started it with no money in the bank and no clients and i built it up from scratch and whatever comes of it whatever we do or don't do whatever it ends up like that for me is something that i'm 
I am super proud of that I've done. I, I love, I sort of, you know, think about it for a couple of seconds and I'm like, right, back to helping young people. But I think kind of just, um, when I talk about the idea of like um, being given lots of ceilings, I'm pretty used to it. Um, I can't remember who said um, uh, today's been a busy day, but I guess as the founder creative director, I guess I'm playing a particular role in the studio, but my days are so varied. Um, I think this is something that kind of um, anybody coming into the studio or clients or um, when we speak to young people, teachers, they kind of, this is something that kind of, you know, they, they think it's a set way, but typically this is what my week looks like. So uh, I've got to do team meetings. I've got to do social media stuff. I've got to do new business. I've got to come up with web design, client meetings, phone calls, maybe making guidelines, writing again, uh, more emails. I try to <laughs> try to avoid emails, but you can't avoid them. Right? Um, Thursdays might be yeah, one to ones with my team, writing a job description, developing a pitch. You can see there's client interaction all the time, and then Friday, you know, it's about um, thinking about the cultural stuff. Maybe it's attending uh, attending a conference or something. And I think as a designer, um, no pun intended, but like it just gives you the opportunity to wear many hats and my old um, sort of full-time places they just wanted me to do one thing they said you need to be a print designer and that's it I'm like well, but you can tap into my other skills no but you need to be a print designer I'm like I need to hand you my resignation because it's just you're you're not tapping into the potential that you, you you've, you've got here so I had this throughout education I had it throughout jobs um, and yeah the, just the multiple hats just develops those transferable skills I talk about our framework and really this is what it's all centered on Again, it's nothing that nobody knows, uh, doesn't know, but it's funny how kind of the work we're doing um, internally and working on people is centered around these th three things. And so this is what we learn ourselves and this is exactly what we're teaching to them as well. So there's no difference. So, you know, there's no kind of, you know, I'm going to drop a young person straight into the deep end. What do you think? Let's work on it. You know, there's, there's not sort of, there's no point sort of trying to um, uh, sort of, you know, um, I can't think of the word. <laughs> make it make make it not as kind of uh real as it needs to be because you know what's what, what's what's the point and yeah basically just to end with um and this is something to me and tony to speak about at the end uh, of the podcast but uh he asked me like what is what is um what are you kind of like most proud of and i think kind of this is the personal answer it's like somehow the NBA Jam Sonic the Hedgehog playing guy with the basketball obsession has somehow been able to get away with now turning that into something that I'm now hosting a webinar with some amazing uh, experts on. And I just love that. I love the fact that, you know, you mentioned the word basketball and everybody comes out of the woodwork with their kind of connection to it, the sport, the music, the fashion, the culture. And it's just, uh, it's like, are we going to do some work together? But okay, we can keep talking about basketball. So I love the fact I just kind of somehow managed to get away with it and continue to get away with it. I'll get found out one day. Um, and ultimately it's to do this, to help young people be a force for good. Um, it's what I'm trying to do every day. I'm not, I'm not so young anymore, but I'm not, I'm not old. I, I refuse to grow up, but yeah, if I can, if I can con combine my experience, my passions and, and sort of help young people be a force for good then I'm happy. So let's have a break. <laughs> cool. Well, I hope, I hope that was really helpful. Um, I tried to interweave process, philosophy, purpose, as well as design process and everything in between. So I hope that was helpful um, for everybody. So now I'm basically going to um, go into a bit more detail on a project you haven't seen yet. Um, this is kind of sort of part, part case study, part process, but also this is um, what the DNT Association are helping triple double with, uh, I guess, on a very specific um, part of, of what we're doing together. And this is a project that I'm hoping after the next, um, you know, few minutes is something you, you're gonna you want to be interested in delivering in your classrooms um, and to start this com conversation basically. Um, so I'm going to sort of show you the results and then I'm going to unpick the design process and then I'm going to aim to still have a bit of time for Q and A. Um, so 
there is a webinar that's just been done, which is why I'm not going to sort of go fully into this. Um, um, Tony, Debbie, Amy can, can share the link. Um, you, you may have already seen it. Um, but a, a bit more detail around a project which is called Intergalactic Athletes. So, um, so I can't remember who asked the question um, where to sort of, you know, what does a brief look like? Um, I guess our brief for this project, like um, a lot of other people, was uh, forced not forced, but I provide the opportunity through through the, the lovely C word. Um, and so I asked a group of young people we were working with and the team, I wonder what is happening with sport in space. That's basically where the brief started. So we all know kind of what it's done um, and we're not gonna linger on it too much and the, the resource doesn't, but we, we understand how it's, probably I should change this to shifted, um, young people's opportunities to be active, you know, impacting outlets for creativity, um, you know, and, and, and this is something we, we've, we wanted to do something about. So what Intergalactic Athletes is, it's a free creative education resource, um, Key Stage 3, Key Stage 4, and it's centred around this immersive space sport themed story where we're basically asking young people, I mean, you've already got all the detail because you've seen what we do, but um, combining their visual, analytical and written skills. And this is their challenge. Their challenge is to design outer space intergalactic athletes in 2D, 3D, robotics, games, whatever you're studying. We, this, is, this is a new resource, which we are kind of at the infancy, the, the beta, your kind of first eyes are basically on this um, to, to do this. And it's all centered around the story that um, out and outer space, while well, sport on earth has been um, started getting a bit strange, this secret team is being formed. And so young people at the time is now to, uh, to create uh, athletes, to come up with creative outcomes to challenge them because, you know, Megan Rafino, Roger Federer, Serena Williams, LeBron James, they're not gonna be enough. It, that last one really hurts me to say that, but they're just not gonna be enough. So it's time to get, basically get, get making. So welcome to Intergalactic Athletes, the craziness that is Intergalactic Athletes and triple doubles creative creative education resource which is what this is about so as i said it, it covers key stage three and four you can deliver it in the classroom at home these are the subjects we've started with but as i'm going to take everybody through kind of we're just at the infancy of this there's uh 10 lessons there's three optional lessons and we've basically worked with jack from active snap to pilot this to develop the curriculum and everything that you're sort of seeing to, today on this sort of the education side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let um, the brief video run and that will introduce you to the concepts. Hi, I'm Poppy. Hello, I'm James. I'm Ellis. And I'm Paul and we're Triple Double. We're a design studio and we design things like this. Collaboration and generating ideas and thinking outside the box or maybe thinking outside the universe is the basis of all our work. Today, we want you to do the same. I can only play basketball on my own right now. It's not the same. Skate parks are all closed. God's not the same in the garden. And I can't watch Formula One. So today, we'd like you to imagine what other sports are currently happening in space. Did you just say space? Yeah. <laughs> Keeping all those aliens, robots, other creatures, and perhaps even human beings active. Design and illustrate what an intergalactic athlete could look like. Now it's time to think outside your house. Think about all the wonders of space. The asteroids, the life forms, the different gases, the different galaxies, the different spaceships, and perhaps even why Michael Jordan was supposedly investigated by NASA for his ability to fly. Supposedly. We are challenging you to create one, um, uno, ein, itchy, intergalactic, outer space athlete in whatever medium you would like to choose. If you're wanting to create a 2D athlete, A4, A3 paper to draw, illustrate your athlete on. Pencils, coloured pens, or even paint, as long as it sticks to the paper. If you're wanting to create a 3D athlete, get really creative with the materials that you've got lying around your house and start thinking as big as the Milky Way. Start off by using one of the following points as inspiration. 
because there are so many big galaxies out there. Mm. Mm. What's your favourite sport on Earth? Or if you don't like sport? Triple double. Sport isn't for me. Which one do you like the least? Do you have a favourite player? Perhaps Cristiano Ronaldo. What would he be like if he was from 20,000 light years away? Like tennis? How about Serena Williams? What would she look like if she had another set of arms to play tennis? Sheesh. I'm going to stop it there, just because Conscious Times goes on for a few more minutes. You've got access to that on the site, but that in a nutshell is the Intergalactic Athletes Challenge. So this is one of the pilots we've done uh, remotely with a group of young people. And I think, I guess all of our work we do, we, we, you know, we think it's, it, you know, it's not just paint a picture, it is bringing in different viewpoints. And I think what's so great is when we're kind of developing ideas, briefs with young people, the fact they can just get it and run with it. Again, I talked about the idea of kind of keeping honest, keeping true, keeping us on our toes. And so kind of what we've done, we've, we've piloted this with about 350 young people inside and outside the curriculum. Um, and what's come back so far has been amazing. So we kind of really at the kind of infancy of getting this used by um, yourselves and um, a whole variety of, way, of ways this is going to go. And just the outcomes that have come from this, um, again, is CV worthy stuff. You know, this is not just kind of something that you look back on and go, it was, it was kind of um, uh, an apple I drew for still life. It's something that really is, is just taking young people out of their comfort zone and really sort of just, just challenging them. Um, so it can be delivered in curriculum, whether that's enrichment in, 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 in lessons, at school clubs, um, we've produced classroom resources, the student workbooks, I'm going to take everybody through that. Um, and it, young people can take part individually as well. So actually next week I'm speaking with two um, uh, youth charities who are really interested in delivering it for all of the, across their program as well. So it's really important for us like that it's accessible, but obviously, you know, yourselves are the kind of the audience as such for the curriculum side, but then what, how do young people be attracted to it on the, the non-curriculum side? Um, I'm going to take everybody through the website uh, in a second, but yeah, every submission receives a bespoke digital certificate. Um, there's an online space theme gallery. And like, like I said, we're in early days of this. So things like accreditation is on the list, you know, partners are on the list. This is a project that's been self-funded by Triple Double. Um, so, you know, the profits we get from our other work is reinvested back into to things like this. So let me flip out of that and take you to the Intergalactic Athletes website, just to give you a very, very top line overview of, of this thing. I'm gonna give everybody the URL afterwards, but this is basically Intergalactic Athletes, um, living, breathing resource. Um, I'm gonna guide you through the process of how we've got there. And really the hard work kind of starts now because it's about kind of building what we've done with young people and um, you know getting it used even more. So uh, what I should have done was load up the schools page, that would have been helpful. Um, but essentially, yeah, um, Intergalactic Athletes IO for such schools. So this is essentially the, the page to come to. So it gives the it gives the complete story um, about the project. It gives you the creative challenge. You've obviously seen about this resource. So this is almost like a single page where you can I don't you can see all of the learning outcomes that have come from this, um, all of the lesson plans. You've got the video brief which you've just seen. And I guess we just really wanted to, to challenge what is the, what is the resource, you know, how can, how can edu education resources be brought to life? I talked about um, the, the sort of the space theme story around it. So I'm going to take everybody uh, partly through this, but we did this shoot where we've come up with this sort of um, secret CCTV recording of um, these intergalactic athletes being shortlisted um within this kind of super duper secret lab which is nowhere near where we work right now i promise it's somewhere beyond area 54 and the website looks like it's no it's back working <laughs> so we also kind of wanted to make this something that you know can be put onto a projector can be put into you know the classroom environment for inspiration there's sound as well um which um, i'll let you interact with the gallery of submissions so you can see, you know, what's on there currently. Every single um, uh, entry gets its own kind of dedicated page. The internet's been a bit slow for me today. Apologies. That's the driver. Um, the English comes in with the creative writing. We've got share shareability, and everything can basically be filtered as well. So 
it's a really sort of fun experience for a young person to say like I've got this thing online and you'll obviously you know play about with the website but I don't know if everybody's aware um, of the the recent uh, children's design code that's come in um, but obviously this is more of the kind of Googles and Facebooks but essentially on top of just our general um, kind of best practice for kind of digital experiences for young people everything is is kind of adhered to with that as well as kind of you know what you expect from an accessibility point of view so you know the submission process what we've done with the feedback of young people is that they essentially own that so it's not the teachers so they're guided through you know everything from um describing the athlete to stats to uploading images um, and it basically then gets sent to the, the back end where obviously um, assuming there's no uh, bad content or anything that's been uploaded we then approve uh, every entry that goes in so it's a really um easy to use simple resource uh works really well on my, obviously as you'd expect you know we start started mobile first but it's just a really um yeah we think we're really proud of of kind of of where this is at we're really excited of where it's going um you're going to have a chance obviously to to explore to explore lots 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 around this and then dear, i'm just going to close the website and i'm just going to give you a sort of an overview very very top one overview of the resources uh, for the classroom that we've put together so in a sense this is your document this is what you'd be using um but obviously the website complements it um so everything is self-contained within this um as as you'd expect as i mentioned we've got the lesson plans suggested timings the learning outcomes that come from this and essentially the lessons are structured around starter activities main activities uh, hopefully i say this right i always get the wrong plenary plenaries and always showing kind of example outcomes so you know we've really sort of you know unpicked um edited curated the design process for young people to go through this to not just think this is about drawing a picture which is not it's not about that it's about mind mapping it's about um, generating ideas so everything is essentially self-contained um within this so you know i'd love to hear feedback from from all of you on sort of what's working what's not as i said we're at the start of this journey we have already had some amazing feedback from other teachers we've had can we do robotics version can we do this can we do that and the short answer is like we want to work with you to basically um you know tweak customize this for whatever's happening in your school um and that's that's how we would always uh, how we always approach it um so you can just get an a sample of, of some of the 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 lesson plans as well um and then right at the end of i can just uh, let's go let's try to guess let's go page 68 yeah so lesson 10 it takes takes everybody through this submission process that's that's part of it um gives everybody the background um and so really yeah it's a self-contained um self-contained resource and then the student workbook basically uh, complements um uh, everything that you've just seen in terms of the teacher resources so again everything can kind of be self-contained uh, ready for upload to the to the site as well so uh, a lot of blank boxes but you know it's important that you know we've, we've got that and like i said really be um, we'd love to get your feedback on kind of um where to go where to go next um with this um so let me flip back to the keynote so as i mentioned so it's interacting athletes starts as an art and design challenge um where young people are being challenged to create the interactive athletes but if you haven't got the sense already mine and triple doubles mind does not just work on kind of let's just stop there how do we how do we evolve this and so we want to develop this resource into three complete uh, areas of learning so physical activity which is where there's conversations happening now um so again somehow i've been able to get away with this right go way back to my story but yeah essentially like what if um we worked with the physical education department and one of the tasks was to come up with uh, new interactive athlete sports so that's the pe side and then the science side so we've spoken with the uk space agency for instance we've spoken with a whole bunch of amazing organizations who are just like attaching to themselves in different ways on this and so yeah what does what does sort of um science uh, look like with intergalactic athletes so 
I would love to also have conversations with everybody, uh, with your colleagues in those departments and, and, and everyone else in between. Um, you know, if anyone knows Tim Peake, that would also be helpful. That'd be really good. And we can have a chat with Tim about this as well. But yeah, we're, we're, we're just at the beginning of this. This is not something that's going to be uh, sort of a one, one hit wonder. And I think we, we're learning so much just by developing this, like what's working, what's not. And again, it's, uh, it's really important for us um, to, to keep doing that. So obviously you'll get the URL afterwards, but yeah, intergalactic-athletes.io was our schools. And I asked Jack, the teacher, as, as you know, to um, for, uh, for um, some uh, press around this, just to give me a quiet and promptness. And this is how he described it, um, which yeah, kind of, I've known Jack for a number of years now and even just completely blew me, blew me away. So he says, Intellect Athletes allows young people to embrace a creative journey that has no boundaries, providing the foundations for children to des design ath athletes that have never existed and explore their imagination without worrying about what is right or wrong. It inspires creative thinking and basically could be a catalyst for those next people, you know, individuals that have used that imagination, innovation to create new worlds. I think what's interesting about that is the fact that if you can remember the girls on the emoji, uh, um, video they said the exact same thing I don't need to worry about what's right or wrong I've got freedom and it, everything is backed up with the learning outcomes and the real world opportunities but it's the fact that I think what Triple Double is really good at doing is allowing freedom within the boundaries I think that is what's what's uh, I always find it interesting when I see parallels between between sort of the the educators and the students saying the same thing so that is kind of the, the final results. How on earth did we get from beginning to where we are? Well, a lot of hard work is the short answer. So firstly, um, again, apologies. I think it was Aaron, sorry, who, who asked this kind of, how do these, these, these projects come about? On any project, whether we are given a, um, a, a 20 page document or a, a sort of hearsay conversation, my job is to kind of lasso up actually what are you wanting to do so when i talk about the idea of girls to get into export it doesn't really you know when you kind of you get into the sort of like a project brief and you're kind of thinking have i read everything in that page 20 page document have i read it every single day you know the certain things sort of come out so um really important things so for us any project we do starts with a sort of almost like a single statement a single challenge a single question perhaps and so whilst this opportunity had come about self-initiated this is really where it all started and it's a question that basically i asked to the team i asked the young people we're working with like i wonder what is happening now where does that type of question come from how do we lasso it up you've heard my story it probably doesn't surprise you that that's kind of the way i'm thinking um rather than going like how can we improve sport on earth but that is kind of like stage stage one of any project which hopefully is, is summarized well and then I guess we start to kind of, I guess we start to lay things down on paper, whether we're sketching, pulling references, starting to kind of almost like build a world that could answer that question without basically saying it's going to be an education resource. It's going to be a piece of print. It's going to be a basketball court. It's going to be a kit. It's going to be a toy. We kind of almost start to sort of, you know, let's look at that question, that challenge from multiple different angles. What could that become? And so this, this, what you're seeing is kind of one of the first kind of almost like mood boards we'd put together for this idea. And it kind of, it kind of sort of, you know, tapped into sort of uh, the idea of what was happening on, on earth is sort of isolation. We sort of were thinking about kind of like fantastical products and experiences. We're thinking about it digitally, we're thinking about time, we're thinking about kind of like unknown areas. And there's lots more mood boards, but this is kind of where we, we sort of, we go from kind of question, then stuff onto a paper. I did warn you there was uh, timelines. Then we get organized. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't know if this is the full, even the full, the full thing, but this in a nutshell is kind of what um, kind of intergalactic athletes, I think version one timeline looked like, looked at. To achieve some of the madness that we do, to achieve some of the, the great stuff I know we do, we get ourselves organized. Um, a lot of our client testimonials talk about the fact they're so organized and they almost sometimes never mention the creative work. So we should probably have a chat with them about that, but getting super organized, like basically thinking of what's not thought of thinking, 
is this going to happen? Have we thought of everything? And building in lots and lots and lots and lots of extra time. Um, so, so important. So just being able to kind of like see stuff on a page and go, okay, this has got a dependency here. It's got a dependency here. Now that's our project manager kind of running that, but ultimately as a team, we've kind of all got access to that. So, you know, everyone's seen the timeline before, but I think for us, like, you know, this is, this is one project, you know, we're kind of working, you know, we might have six to eight projects on our time. So you can imagine kind of just like everything kind of fitting together. So we kind of, we go kind of from a thought to a sort of almost like, what can the idea be? to then starting to kind of you know think about the uh the sort of the plan around it so somewhere between here and here we go we're going to turn this into into uh, uh the resource and i basically said we're going to give this away for free this is not something that we need to go to somebody with we are going to launch this rightly or wrongly i'm going to be i'm going to be responsible and we're going to give this away for free we are not going to rely on a brand to fund this we're going to do this and we're going to we're going to get people on board um in the other way and i still you know i'm excited to see how that's going to uh, uh, take forward so i'm going to drill into one part of it next which is the the shoot the cctv video that you saw so um we know that we need to do a shoot to basically um produce this kind of cctv recording so at this stage you know we're getting really really focused on basically almost creating like internal briefs for ourselves so this was us going, okay, so what should the, what should the room feel like? You know, small to medium size, not a warehouse, neutral surf surfaces, like fluorescent, unusual lighting. Like I say to you interrogation, really, you kind of think, yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. Um, you know, points of interest, there's already kind of like, you know, an unusual vent or something. Then we're thinking about the props, you know, sort of like, well, what, what's actually sort of on there? So you can literally read filled, you know, containers filled with Lego or cereals, or, you know, it's a lab, but not an active room. Like getting really, really focused with our mood boards, our reference. And in the, the teacher resources, this is what the, the young people go through as well. There's no point having a page of, um, you know, 50 references, because you just end up copying them. It's about kind of getting the select references um, and sort of internally we're all agreed on this. Same with kind of like how we're setting up the camera. You know, is it top down? you know, what are some of the angles we're trying to sort of like, uh, like achieve and actually even just looking at this now, it's kind of makes, make, I mean, it makes sense to me of what happened now looking at this, which I guess it should, but I guess sometimes we're so busy, we just sort of don't even think about it. I guess this, you know, when someone says to me, Paul, what's the process? I sometimes go, I'm not quite sure, but today my job is to unpick some of that. Um, and so this is then, you know, the project manager is then going off and um, sourcing certain locations looking at props you know i um, you saw the emoji um on the yellow background honestly like you know trying to find a pair of false teeth it's difficult <laughs> you know because we're trying to be cost effective at the same time right we're not trying to we're not trying to like you know we're not uh, we're not trying to hire stuff and we're trying to keep stuff low cost economical so then we go back to another organized spreadsheet so we go back to to um uh in this case the location so you know whether it's shops studios um i was actually at the Tate Modern at the weekend and yeah the top floor of the Tate Modern like you know got absolutely no right to have a conversation with Tate Modern about doing something called intergalactic athletes but why not why not that's that's what we sort of say so we like to get ourselves organized and then kind of shoot day arrives and this is what it looks like it is not glamorous but it is glamorous um so making sure that the lobster claws are on the table with a correct piece of blue tack that you can't see in camera, making sure that the, the, the slinky uh, and the bell jars lights reflected, making sure that the, the tables are polished, making sure the floor is clean. You know, when it comes to doing a shoot, it's about getting like hands on. Um, and a um, lot of my experience before kind of triple double was in kind of photography shoots and art direction. And so kind of, you know, getting involved and getting things up is um is really great also really weird we don't usually all wear gray as well that's actually quite a rare shop as <laughs> all wearing gray designers have uh have a tendency to wear gray but um i got the camo trousers on there you can see but um but yeah so the shoot sort of looks looks like that and then it becomes edited and it turns into what what you need to do so the next side of it I'm going to flip to is the kind of look and feel. So obviously the, the identity, not just the logo of Intergalactic Athletes is, 
it's it's very unusual it's um you know we purposely we did we wanted to become this quite ownable identity this this ownable thing and so when we're developing any kind of look and feel and when i talk about look and feel it's almost what i talked about earlier like this this slide where almost the it could be whatever like someone's going to call me at some point and go could we do intergalactic athletes as part of x and i'm like well, i haven't thought of x because i didn't i didn't think it was going to be that however when we're developing a look and feel the whole point is is like what does this thing feel like on any kind of touch point so of course we knew we had to make the website but it's are we thinking about things that can be applied over here you know the, the kind of idea of sort of the website is almost got like this frosted window um it's sort of like you're, you're sort of seeing the video in behind but you know if someone said actually could you bring to life that project at a education exhibition or well, how how would that frosted thing feel like in, in real life so when we're developing look and feel it's really important it's not just about the visual identity it's about how things can work together across any kind of format so these are some of the early um uh sort of exploration we was doing yeah my notes on the left there can't believe it might look good corporate that sort of cone and the intergalactic athletes federation which is so funny um we started thinking about yeah sort of the content is at the center of this so how do we kind of separate um sort of non-owned content with the look and feel so the kind of space theme gallery the sort of floating entries that's where it came came back and then again, once we've done the exploration again, it's more of that mood boarding summarizing. So kind of, you know, that's up on the wall and as a team we go, okay, it's not exactly going to become orange with that typeface because it becomes what it becomes, but it keeps sort of going into the detail, coming back out, going into the detail and coming back out. Then to, to end with, to kind of build the, the, the site, I mean, I'm giving you the very compressed version because it's, it's, it's probably a two hour conversation on its own, but, when we're doing anything, um, it starts with with content. So everything you see on the website was basically written before anything was designed. So, you know, just every single state of submission. So when you're uploading, when it's complete, when there's no results for gallery, like what is the content? Content comes first, design is second. I have this conversation once a week with a, with a client because uh, they just think, build me a website and go, what's on the website? I've got no idea. How can I make your website then? Um, one day, well, that's the bigger that's the bigger um, task outside of supporting young people. So everything starts with with content. So I think this was maybe like a twenty four page uh, Google document of words, basically, um, and it's making sure that it's on it's on brand, it's um, uh, it's hitting all those things, and also it just helps to kind of separate away from the kind of design because you go, actually, do you know what? I don't I don't think we need a state for this or actually i don't i don't think this needs to be included and it's it's nice to be able to kind of look at content design in parallel um but it, you know just the fact that the, the the logo has got intergalactic athletes interplanetary uh, federation in, it's a long logo right so it's kind of we have to think about well how does the long logo kind of work in 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 um in contrast and there's lots of digital design development this is just one part of it um where we will go off and explore we'll, we'll take that content we'll think mobile we'll think desktop and we'll basically bring it together so especially when we're doing digital work it's like we need to be able to kind of explain to ourselves um uh basically what um like how it works as well as as well as it looks um and then actually sorry before and I, I will do that and then i'll come out and then we'll, we'll finish with q a and then yeah i guess like i said just a, a uh, the uh, Tony will be happy with this, getting, getting a little feature here. But um, yeah, the DT Association were really uh, kind to, to to feature it, and this, I guess where our kind of relationship started. We've had kind of early press on it, and we're just getting going with it. So kind of we really need your help to to kind of take part to to, to you know build case studies together. You know, let Triple Double do the he heavy lifting, but we want to show kind of what what you've uh, what you've done with this. And at the end of the day, you've seen what happens with Active Snap. So. You know, really, it's up to us what we do with this as 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 um, collaborators. Really, um, one thing I'm going to do just very very quickly. I realised that I knew there's a tab I missed, and it is this one. So this is just to give everybody a sense of before it goes into development, like when we're doing the design, um, what our kind of like interactive prototypes look like for the website as well. So can you see there's 69 screens? So we're basically, you know 
developing design at this fidelity level before it goes into uh, development. So it is exhaustive. It's, you know, it's what people expect of us. Um, it's why we're having that conversation around the app, but you can see kind of what started with a single line of, you know, I wonder what's happening and how it turns into, you know, a full, a full thing. Um, trying to see if there's a, yeah, so the whole submission process. So yeah, what happens if someone puts in their second name? And this is the thing with design, like great design is invisible. You shouldn't, you should, you shouldn't notice it. It should just work. The, the classic one when you're doing digital design is forgetting that the keyboard appears when, when you're on a mobile. That is one of the, the traps that all designers fall into. So how does this submission pro process happen at that point? I've definitely overrun. So hopefully there isn't two hours worth of questions, but we can now stop for some questions before I show the final uh, social media stuff to come and follow and continue the conversation. So yeah, thank you for listening. And I, I really hope that was, um, hope you, you took a lot away from it. And I hope you are interested in, in Intergalactic Athletes, Triple Double. And like I said, I'd love to just um, continue the conversation with everybody. So yeah, I'm Paul at Triple Double Studio, with Triple Double Studio on Instagram. And then the Twitter is a bit difficult, more difficult, intergalactic without the E underscore AS athletes, but um, I'll stop sharing. I did not think that was, I thought I was going to whistle through that an hour and a half, but there you go. <laughs> Any initial thoughts or feedback on the, on, on the intergalactic athletes concept? I'd be just interested to, to get your thoughts initially. There's no right or wrongs here. I just want to just want to get a, a, a gut instinct. I really like it. Um, I'm looking for something with my uh, after Easter for an after school club. Um, this is sort of perfect, actually, for Key Stage 3. Did you take Key Stage 4 as well? He says three, he says four, but we're also, um, we've had feedback that it could work younger, could work older. I mean, I, I, I love yeah. the creativity side of it. One of the things that we don't do enough of is, is create is being creative. You know, we're constricted by the curriculum quite a lot. There's a lot to tick off on the curriculum. And I think this, this is really great as a sort of, like you said, an enrichment opportunity. Yeah, I, I felt the same. I think that fits in really well for uh, for an after club um, point of view. So here we run an enrichment during school time and um, towards the end of the day. Um, and so that's something that could fit in really well. Wise. Um, one thing for me, and it's something I've done with a lot of programs, they tend to go with 10 sessions. But we, if you're doing that once a week for a term, that would be six. If you were to fit that into a term time. So if you would have a, a six lesson version, um, that might work a little bit better. Um, or 12 if you're going across the two a, a full term um, so I tend to usually string those kind of things out if you go over a whole term yeah well that's the thing we've we've the way we've um, done this is this is a starting point so for instance the optional lessons so for instance there's a lesson on drawing practice mm. if your students don't need that then take it out adapt it um, somebody <laughs> emailed me the other week going I'm really sorry but like we've kind of done a our different version of crazy eights is that okay well, of course it's about the concept it's about the foundation of the process and yeah i mean we're not going to offend it if the same doesn't we, we want to know that we want to get that feedback and go well here is the sixth version um part so you know um i don't have all the answers but we're working really hard to get them so i, I really appreciate that insight Aaron. that's really good any other thoughts i mean i I'll share mine. I mean, I, I, I'm struggling to see it at Key Stage 4, to be honest. Um, I just can't see it. I think the kids will have progressed probably beyond that at that stage. And also, for, you're, you're sort of slightly more constrained at Key Stage 4 with curriculum um, that you can teach. I actually think this would work in some primaries at the moment. There are a lot of primaries out there, quite a few more than you would think, probably, that are doing 3D printing. And this would be a great project that they can get designs from head through concept to 3d printer and and go all the way through um so for me it's sort of primary school top end primary school bottom end key stage three just to open up that creativity and and get them thinking wacky and get them thinking that, that you know there is as you said paul that there are no wrongs there is there's nothing that you can put on paper that is wrong which i like 
Any other thoughts? Questions for, for me? <laughs> I can't have got it that easy. Or maybe, maybe is there is there anything that you were expecting, like just kind of perception of kind of I guess design studios industry that your is now shifted? Not not something new, but I don't know. Like you were expecting to have the, uh, the, the, the amount of work you seem to do surprises me. <laughs> you know, they, they sort of you know you see the timeline, you see your your concepts that you, you put up there, it's, it's the amount of time that that obviously takes. And what I find difficult with students is if you're doing a graphics lesson with them and they're designing a logo, for example, um, it's, I find it really difficult to try and get them to, do, to, to have an idea and then to do a very minor change, whether it's color, and then to take, and for them to realize that actually that's really important because they don't see the value in that, that how, how their design can change, have a minimal change or lots of minimal changes till you get an end kind of an idea. I think they kind of want to jump into a final design or they want to jump <coughs> into the end bit. I find that difficult to teach as a teacher. Mm. I, so I think like, we're all guilty of it, right? Um, probably, the, probably the best example, well, not best example, but like, um, so when I started Triple Double, I was like, okay, what's this thing going to be called? I could have registered Slam Studio, so Slam Done, I was like, mm. or Triple Double. I just went Triple Double. I didn't think about it. That was the solution, right? And the same with sort of certain things. I'm like, I know, I can, I can see it. Like, I know exactly what that thing's going to be. The way that we challenge ourselves, I almost maybe try this with the students, is if you think you've got that solution, go show it to three people who it's for. Don't present it to them, but ask them, do they understand, like, or whatever the context and explain why. And even if they all go, yeah, don't change the color, ignore what um, um, Grant's saying, <laughs> they're gonna come up with something else that, that that young person may not have thought of. So we would always go back to, that's why they're kind of presenting, the kind of giving, receiving feedback is so important. It kind of like just, at some point you've got to stop, right? At some point we have to get intergalactic athletes off the ground, but, if we ever come up against our block like that, or if we've ever come up um, um, ourselves working with young people, that's how we kind of reignite that. And then, and then it's kind of almost like the evidence is there. They can't really ignore it. I don't know if that helps, but that's kind of how I would usually go about kind of unblocking that situation. I think what I've learned through doing the podcast is that this idea of design fixation, where you go for, you know, you get one idea in your head and you can't get that out. You just go for that. I think at school, I thought that was something that students struggled with, but professional designers didn't. But the more, more designers I talk to that, you know, quite often they say, well, you know, you start off something and you've just got one idea in your head. You get that down on paper, you model it, you do whatever you have to do. And then that brings you through that to the next stage. Is that what you find, Paul, is that sometimes you enter something with a brief and you think, I've got, I've, you know, there's just one thing in my head at the moment, I need to work that through before I can go somewhere else. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, we've, we've got like a, a branding project at the minute and like, I just, we just got to a point where I was like, it's not right. We've got to start again. It's not starting again, but it's like going through what we have we have to do is unlocking what we know what we need to do. Like getting things wrong means you can understand what you need to do. And obviously there's a nuance to that, balancing it within a classroom environment, a tight deadline, a budget, I get that. But this is where I think planning is so important because if you can allow for that, allow that contingency, then, you, okay, fine, that kind of might eat up the time, but at least you've, you've, you've planned it because, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just, my mind works in a really simple way. I'm just like, you know, um, Coming, coming on to uh, the, uh, the the call town, I was like, right, okay, what cap am I going to wear? Like, and it's just it's just like, what 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 cap what cap am I going to wear? And I'm like, it's my cap. If no one likes my cap, then so what? But it's just those small little things. I'm like, sometimes just kind of making that decision and kind of just rolling with it and not worrying about it. I think is um, even if you go, you know, really far down the line and you go, actually, we've gone we've gone really far off because a client or a young person will bring you back to line pretty quickly. 
I'm usually the young person. I'm not right. The clients are the easy bit. <laughs> um, but just allowing that time, allowing that kind of contingency time, um, I think is so important. And I go back to the idea of kind of learning to think, not learning how to just apply skills. Um, does, does anybody else kind of that idea of kind of, so Gran asked, just trying to be as helpful as possible. And I'll, hopefully I have been, but I'm just, if you've got me for a few more minutes, like there's something you really want to ask, but Gran was saying about kind of the amount of work, but is there anything else kind of people's expectations are like, has, has shifted and they could share that with the group maybe. Oh, can I ask? Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry I was just gonna say a point on that. Um, partly due to COVID, but my school has, has, has moved the workshop from one side of the room, one side of the school building to the other. So my year 10 have sort of been between projects. We've got to a point where we were gonna make something and then we couldn't make because we didn't have access to particular tools and, and, and whatnot. So we've, we've basically had three or four projects on the go at once. And I've tried to kind of say, like sell it to them. Like this is what happens in industry. You can have more than one project on the go. And that's, that's a healthy thing. Um, they've been kind of put off by it and they've, they've found it very difficult to see that that is a, a real life thing that happens that you can have, you know, one day doing a brand for something and another day doing a website for something else. Is that what you find in your day to day? Or do you tend to see a project through and then, move on to the next one it's definitely not like that yeah it is it is um, and it's it's multiple and it's like stuff that's happening in a week happening in a month happening in a year and so i would almost um i go back to maybe that first move board of intercarty athletes in terms of like it's it's sort of um it's not specific to a format so there's stuff happening in the web project that your students working on that's probably can be applied in their other projects. So this is about how could you, well, so not how could you, because you're the expert here, but like, could you almost have that conversation to be like, think about what you're learning over here. How could you apply it over here? Because really those four projects could be part of the same project. You know, Interactive Athletes is a website, is a look and feel, is teacher resources, is a film. Those are four individual projects. But they all need to kind of fit together as well. Hopefully, hopefully you'll say yes, they do feel like they fit together as one, well, but maybe it's to get getting them to think about what are you learning over here to add to there, because that is the reality of it. Um, Somebody is not just going to come and say, we need X. And I think kind of the great designers will be the ones who are going, I'll do you X, it can work on Y. And when you need your higher balloon, it's still going to work. Um, you know, the great, you know, take, take some, you know, I don't know, first one comes to mind is like kind of like the Virgin brand. You just think about it, it's like, it doesn't really matter what it's going to become, you know it's going to work. And so, you know, maybe even giving some like real world examples of that to just be like, you know, that's why you've got to think kind of multi. I mean, obviously, yeah, there's capacity thing, right? I'm doing four things at once, I can't, but that's, that, that doesn't sound like that's the challenge. It's more of just getting them to, to think, you know, not, not thinking kind of just like, you know silos and think actually something i can do here it can make my life easier over here if that makes sense yeah i think their frustration is that things aren't finished but like they should love the fact that it's not finished and it's part of the job you know that's what that's what i'm trying to say to them yeah and it's kind of what nothing can ever be finished can it so it's kind of almost saying like how do you um you know write down what you think is not finished come back to it and look at that same challenge next term is it the same challenge? Probably not, because something's changed. Something's probably shifted. So, um, yeah, that's probably something I'd, I'd love to talk to you a bit more about. <laughs> I don't think I can answer that straight away, sorry. Also, but that's a great, I mean, it sounds like you've got some very mature students who are thinking of that idea of, like, like being finished. Um, I was going to question you on that, Paul. Sorry, Alex, I'll come back to you in just one second. I was going to question you on that, because um, you strike me as a perfectionist. <laughs> But there's got to be times where you just say, you know what, I've just got to let that go now. It's not, it's not where I'd like it to be, but I've got to let that go. Is that a conflict? So I'm a perfectionist based on, are we considering everything that we should be considering? And if we're not, then that's where the perfectionist kicks in to be like, you've answered three or four of these things, but you haven't thought about this. In terms of sort of like perfection of kind of the output, 
I expect anybody coming into the, the studio, anybody in the industry to have a, you know, that, that level of quality that you're going to strive for. Somebody would look at our company and go, oh, I can do, do better work than that. And that's up to them. And I can look at them and go, oh, the same work and go, I've done that. I think really it's more around, are we being perfect in the sense of considering all the options? And if we are, then I'm happy. If we're not, I'm going, well, why not? Because we can say to a, we can, we can go to a client, we can go to a young person, um, you, you asked for this, but have you thought about that? And honestly, the difference when you have a client response to be like, well, we just need this. It kind of just really quickly makes you realize I don't really want that person <laughs> because it's like, what's like, again, I go back to that landfill notion. Like, what's, what's the point of doing it? If you're not going to consider all of those things, what's, what's the point of doing it? So, so, so yes and no. I mean, I, I think as my role, I need to be able to, I, I have to get bogged down in typography and I have to take a step back. But that's why I kind of mentioned around the content piece of Intergalactic Athletes. If you're showing me something that is not using the content, how can I, how can I judge it? How can I judge whether it's per perfect? You know, you know it's, it's the, we hate Loren Ipsen. We hate placeholder content. We hate it because it's just, you're not bringing to life what is actually going to be. Um, so that's how I kind of answer the perfection question. Do you believe me, Tony? That's that's the question to you. I don't know. I'll tell you in a month or two, Paul. <laughs> um, Alex, Alex, you want to? Do you want to cut? It? <laughs> Hello. Sorry. I know we're kind of close to time, but I just wanted to ask. It was actually to do with the communication with the client. Um, so, in terms of how often, perhaps, you would touch base with that client, or what kind of does that communication look like throughout that that project or the brief? Um, does that make sense? Is that? You know, it does make sense. Um, uh, it really depends. I think. I think if we're in a, um, I'd say it's a minimum of once a week, and it probably could be a maximum of. I'm going quite generic here. It could be like a maximum of three times a day. We don't go sort of right three times and not speaking to you again. Uh, at the minute, it seems to be like voice notes and texting seems to just be the way. Which I, I like voice notes. I'm fine with texting. I'm not because I'm a bit like that's a separate thing. But. Um, we, we tend to sort of set up like weekly calls with clients, what's happening this week, what's happening next week, which is exactly our kind of our process. Um, but some need a lot more handholding, especially in the kind of early stages. Um, and I don't know, it kind of, it kind of just depends. But I think setting up a weekly call, having, um, I mean, the d &T Association can say how this is going, but we've done the same with, with them to so just basically have that you know, constant thing, but then this morning I messaged Amy, I don't think we need it, we're doing this today, anything to report, yes, no, okay, off we go. And I think basically all it does, it just means that, you know, they know that you're not just working with them, but it means that they know that you're kind of, you're thinking about them. Um, and I think that's, that's sort of really um, important. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, there needs to be some boundaries for sure, because a lot you can't actually do the work and i've had a few clients in the past who are like can we just talk all day and i'm like yes we will charge you for this but you're not doing any work so just so you're aware of that so i think there's a nice balance but yeah i think like a weekly rhythm of comp communication it's like cool i'm speaking with triple double on tuesday cool i'm ready for it oh so it's a basketball game of the weekend by the way did you, did you hear that you know so you know if you can get kind of your your sort of students into a sort of like a, a, some sort of consistent rhythm of communication um, and then at some point you go, okay, there's no more capacity. So we need to bring on more people or less clients or talk less. Did that answer your question, Alex? Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if you've got a client who is quite particular, like you said, um, about them wanting perhaps um, maybe narrow-minded, is that the right word? In terms of kind of set, they, they have their set idea. Would you push and challenge that further? Or would you kind of meet what they're asking for in terms of the brief and just meet that expectation or would you try and, and continue to challenge so we always meet expectations in the sense of what they think they're looking for and we always exceed expectations because of what they, they're not expecting 100 so um 
let's let me give you this example of this possible app project. They need an app. So <laughs> we can deliver an app, but I think what they think they need within it is not what they need. So we're, we're saying this, but it's our job to kind of educate them as, as to why. Um, but almost before we've got to that stage, we're really good at kind of analyzing, okay, is this, do I want to work with these people? Do they understand it? Do they, you know, people don't really come to, when people come to sometimes get in touch and be like, you know, we want big agency experience. I'm like, you're going to hate it. Cool. We're not going to work there. So we kind of do a lot of kind of pre-screening as, as you know, people, I expect people to do to, to us. And I, I talked about the idea when I showed the logos, like we just get to the good stuff because we've kind of got the sort of, we've kind of got the kind of reason to work together a bit out of the way. And then it's a case of talking to them around why they should be considering a hot air balloon and not just um so yeah saying no is one of my favorite things to do um you know because we can only do so much but you know we've got to be, we've got to be sensitive to it but again i kind of go back to the this maybe the the sort of the the logo block of the question with grant it's like when you speak to young people and you get their thoughts you can't ignore the evidence you can't ignore it and so um you know we we don't have a set style in triple double you know but we we have a set I guess methodology process and it's but it's never fully formed so kind of you need to be able to um need to be sort of uh ready for it and, it, and basically just means like that's what we're known for like people people come to us with a lot of mess and we're good at fixing things i wish people would come to us with a nice kind of uh you know getting girls into export what a complete mess that is like how has it got to this state but let's start to unpick it yeah people don't really come to us with um polished stuff it is a lot of kind of chaos and we're good at kind of de-chaosing but that means some hard conversations I've, I've got one coming up in a couple of days let's see how that goes but otherwise we're just tied into it we're miserable and then we're not going to pull out again money's money right but it's not it's not going to keep us going forward so i'm going to draw it to a close i'm looking we're, we're, we're a good five minutes over time um can i just Thank you, Paul, for, for, I mean, there's a lot of prep gone into that and you probably haven't talked that much in quite a while, but thank, thanks so much for everything that you did this afternoon and for, for giving everyone an insight into how Triple Double works. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone on the call for coming in and for taking the time to, um, to sit here this afternoon and, 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 and learn from this. Um, you will get a, an evaluation form sent out to you we're really at the early stages of this we're, we're, we're trying to we're, we're fine-tuning it ourselves and working out you know how long should it be should we break it down a little bit more are there are there um should do you want would more information up front have helped you a little bit more or so we, when you get the evaluation the more detail you can give us back the better it will be as we move forward i think this is a better way a more efficient way of doing it i mean you know in an ideal world one teacher in a studio for three days is perfect but the only way that that can happen is if mostly if, if teachers are willing to give up holidays um because uh, we've only met one head teacher i think so far that's been willing to release a teacher during term time so it has to be that or we we condense it into these virtual sessions and do it this way so your feedback will be greatly appreciated and thanks so much to everyone for coming here tonight and thanks again paul my pleasure it's great to meet everybody um hopefully jim just was having some tech problems but yeah it's great great to meet everybody and yeah i would love to i'd love to continue the conversation um and i'm hoping um we're gonna see each other in person in some capacity i don't fully know what's happening there <laughs> yet but but yeah it's um i'm, I'm looking forward to, to speaking and as i say to everybody like honestly even if it's just to bounce around ideas get a second thought something in the industry You've got my email like i might not reply immediately but i wouldn't expect the same from yourselves but honestly like please, please just do because um it's just what we do so um if we get to work together great if it's just we're talking for a few years and we never meet then great as well whatever we can do to help is really important to us so yeah yeah thank you have a good evening everyone thanks, thanks so everybody. much thanks cheers bye bye thank you very much Paul.